And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you gotta say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russian. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korean. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. The lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. I said the lion won't To sell our souls to barter profit Like God's property is hard to market So we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection You lying, won't sleep The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. The white man is enacting a story all over the world. We, we left our homes and flooded the world. We smothered culture. We smothered knowledge. We erased history and rewrote it our way. Myself, I'm 100, or my grandfather is 100% Ashkenazi Jewish, claiming to be Jewish. Ashkenazi Jewish is just a conspiracy. White men claiming to be of tribes of Israel when I'm Germanic, you know, I, yeah. I have no ties to Israel, no ties to Judaism, you know, except, except loosely written history that's been whitewashed over for centuries, and, you know. It's, From the Renaissance. Oh yeah, right? You just you you wipe everything clean. It's funny how it's, exactly the Renaissance. It's this rebirth, but it's it's white rebirth. I think at the same exact time the Renaissance is happening, Columbus is sailing to America and committing genocide. There's only one true ethnic Jew, the Mizrahi Jew, because they are Africans. And if you read the original Bible written in Phoenician Hebrew, they're not Jewish people. Are not. Europeans. The modern Jews in Israel are Russians from or Khazars, to be precise, from Russia. I learned it from my grandfather that he was because he was an Ashkenazi Jew. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a as a color have told us what it means to be black. And the you know you know what you are. Are you we? are an ancient Israelite. Well, ancient Israelite, that's who we are. That's who we are. You can give me time. Yeah. If you give me time. But, 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 I know, I know. We don't have so many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yes. notes. And I promise we'll give yes. more teaching. But here is my challenge to you. All right. I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites or you want to be Jews? Do you want to? The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. Most Egyptologists and anthropologists, archaeologists of the Eurocentric persuasion will say that uh, Egypt is in Africa. They had to concede that, but then they still draw the line by saying that uh, they weren't Africans like that. In other words, they weren't dark-skinned people. 
And of course, this is all part of the great deception. And the reality is that if they give up Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, if, if they give that up and say that that was a part of black Africa, then they will also have to give up Israel. And that's why they draw the line at Egypt, because if they give up Egypt, they've got to give up Israel. Now, we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you where Israel sits on the African tectonic plate, which means that Israel is North East Africa. Now, when we look at this map, this is the, this is the Sinai, okay? This is the Red Sea. This is Egypt. This is the Sinai. This is Israel. All right, this is Saudi Arabia over here. Now, if you see this in Hebrew, it says Haluak Africani, the African plate. Here it is right here. Israel is sitting right here. Israel is sitting on the Haluak Africani, which means that Israel is Northeast Africa. Uh, without question, we are in Northeast Africa. We are landlocked to Egypt, with the exception of the Suez Canal, which was a man-made uh, ditch, a boundary now uh, between, in fact, it's not even really a boundary anymore since uh, Egypt has reclaimed the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, but nevertheless, even those of us who are Pan-Africanist in our thinking and Afrocentric, we forget and we leave off that portion of Northeast Africa and, and, and don't want to claim anything beyond that. Europeans! classified this area as a Middle East, you know, and then since this is the Middle East, the other question, where the Middle West, where the Middle North, and where the Middle South? They don't have no geographical terms like that. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. So, a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany, they looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10, and they connected Gomer with Germany, so they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name, Brown, doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened to Brown. It's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false. <laughs> Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! And you know what else, Jim? I, I just want to say this to our Christian friends, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, just, to, just to call it as it is and say it straight out, you know? You, you guys are worshiping one Jew. That's a mistake. You should be worshiping every single one of us because we all die for your sins every single day. And that's exactly what's going on here. Yeah. We're, we're all God's firstborn. We're dying for your sins right now because, because the Jewish people in the land of Israel are the bulwark yeah. against the orcs. Mm -hmm. Okay? The orcs are coming not to a theater ne near you, but to your home. Uh, the entire Bible is about black people. Um, not only was Jesus black, but every character in the Bible seems to be black too. Yeah, Zephaniah and Jeremiah and Jebediah, those, those all aren't white people names, okay? Um, and Jesus wasn't some tan, partially melanated Middle Eastern person either. I'm talking straight up black dude, okay? Even in the book of Revelation, when you get the vision of Daniel, he's describing someone with feet like burnt brass and white woolly hair, and we've got the deep running water voice with the, the red eyes, and uh, you guys, he's black. The Jewish people are black people, like Kanye was right. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black.
I have called you, and I'm not alone in this, many Jews have called you an anti-Semite. Mm -hmm. I've also talked to people who say you have a really sweet heart, just so you know. And you and I have a number of mutual friends uh, in the world. But I think it's important to first identify what anti-Semitism is. It is a different type of hate than any other type of hate in the world. And if you and I are speaking crossways because we have a different understanding and definition, yeah, that's not going to lead to any dialogue. That's not going to lead. Look, I, I said to Scott, I'd love to walk out of here and say, you know what? I was wrong and write an article. I apologize and I was wrong. But the first piece is to have a mutual and understanding of what is anti-Semitism. I think that would help a tremendous amount. I actually totally agree with you on that. That is a perfect place to start. Could you okay, provide so for us a definition of anti-Semitism? Genesis chapter 11, verse 10, explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. If you repeat this fact, they can't laugh at you. I want to say peace and blessings to everyone. Let me adjust my screen here. I want to say peace and blessings to everyone. Hope all is well with you guys. Let me make sure my mic is set correctly. Let me make sure it's, the audio is good. Okay, the audio is good. My apologies for being a little late. Uh, still was trying to make some adjustments to my um, presentation tonight. And, um, you know, we, we, we got a lot to uncover. You know, we got a lot to uncover. And um, we're not going to really deal much with the uh, the spring or should I say the um, the eclipse. You know, I really don't want to deal too much with that because I believe that that subject is being uh, already addressed. So what I want to do is continue to deal with the numbers, the math. Right. I want to still deal with calculating the days, the times, you know, uh, giving clarity on why many are celebrating uh, Easter on the day that they're celebrating, you know, matter of fact, why are they celebrating Easter altogether? You know, I mean, because, uh, that is a very deception, deceptive teaching about Christ, uh, you know, about the Messiah, the Hebrew Israelite Messiah and associating that with Easter and, you know, tomorrow, I mean, I know Kojic is going to be off the chain. It's going to be packed. The Baptist church is going to be packed with people honoring this day that is a made up day it is a made up day right it's not biblical right now it's not made up in other cultures such as when we get into uh the uh persians the babylonians uh the sumerians when you start getting into those cultures it's a different story because that's their culture but that's not the culture of the israelites that's not the culture of the followers of the way, right? I'm saying the followers of the way. I'm not saying Christians. I'm saying the followers of the way, the disciples, the, you know, those that the early Israelite followers of Hamashiach, that was not their doctrine. So we got a lot to unpack here. And I know you guys see the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the image there on your screen with Donnie McCur uh, Kirkland. Uh, he, says something that was pretty much uh, that's profound from a perspective of someone being in Christianity and he is a pastor and uh, family bear with me one second real quick. Let me just show a quick video. Uh, someone is, is at my door. Let me open the door real quick. Bear with me one second. The lion won't sleep To sell our souls to barter profit Like God's property is hard to market So we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection You lying, won't sleep tonight All right, family. Sorry about that. 
had uh, actually the doorbell rang. So wanted to answer the door just to make sure that everything was good. But again, um, Donnie McClurkin, um, I know many of you guys are familiar with him. He's the one that's saying that that song, We Fall Down, uh, But We Get Up. He sang a number of different songs that was very popular. But he made a, you know, a statement, you know, he posted a statement rather on Facebook. And I want to read his statement because his statement is very pretty much lines up with each and every one of us. Our statements, our comments, our thoughts. All right. So let's go ahead and um, see what he had to say. All right. Why did Donnie McClurkin say the math doesn't add up? Because that's one of the that's the thing that he 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 was clear on. He's like, hey, the math doesn't add up. What math? And we're going to get to his post here in a second. Right. Here's his post right here. This is the post that he made on Facebook. And um, I'm going to zoom in so that way you guys can see it. Right. This is Donnie McClurkin. This is his post on Facebook. Right. He posted this. Uh, Actually, this is a post from um, Lash, actually, but this is something that's being shared. He, he shared this um, from Lash. I didn't even pay attention to the date, but this is from last year. But notice what he says here. Good Friday. Who came up with that? That's his question that he asked. That's that's one of the questions that he asked. Good Friday. Who came up with that? All right. He also says. Why do we follow so blindly? Do you guys agree with that? That we follow so blindly? We've been had, we've been hoodwinked. You know, thanks, Sister Carol. He said, she said that uh, he reposted it. Okay, got you. So again, he said, he asked the question, why do we follow so blindly? Do you guys agree that we follow so blindly? You know, uh, we've been had, we've been taught to trust our oppressors, the very ones that have enslaved us, the very ones that have, uh, you know, did all kinds of committed all kinds of heinous crimes. And if uh, they follow, if you backdate the Geneva Convention, they will break every international law. You know, have you guys thought about that? You know, why do we follow so blindly? It's because we've been institutionalized to doing so we've been institutionalized for doing so and this is donnie mcclerklin and as sister carol pointed out he reposted this he posted it last year but he reposted this and asked the question good friday who came up with that why do we follow so blindly and he didn't stop there he said this here he said it doesn't add up now, do you guys agree? I know we all been saying it doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. Crucified on a Friday. And as he put here, Friday morning, Friday night. Stayed in the grave on Saturday. Saturday morning, Saturday night. Rose early Sunday morning. We are a day short, according to Matthew 12, 40. That's what he says. That's what he says. He says uh, a day early. He, now, we have to agree that the map doesn't add up. And he goes on to say here. He says, right. The math. Ain't mathin <laughs> he said the math ain't mathin y'all may have to use that one right the math ain't mathin we can get it right really we can if we simply stick to the bible let me say that again he said the math ain't mathin we can get it right if we uh, if we simply stick with the Bible, I'll say it one more time. We can get it right. We, he says, really, we can. He didn't just, just say we can get it right. He said, really, we can if we simply stick with the Bible. 
And then he goes on. I think he closes this out here by saying. Just going to leave this right here. Now, you know. I mean, the church is coming up with all kinds of ways and reasoning, trying to explain. Oops, let me go back here. All right. Ooh, went, went, don't know what happened here. Oh, I see what happened. It went all the way back to the beginning. All right, let me get back to my slide. The church has come up with all kinds of ways to try to justify Good Friday. Trying to not just justify Good Friday, but justify celebrating Easter, you know, celebrating the resurrection on the day that they celebrate the resurrection and family, the math doesn't add up. And for those that ha uh, are just tuning in and didn't tune into the lesson that we did a couple of nights ago, part one, we laid the foundation of de debunking Good Friday. So I'm trying to get to, here we go. As you can see, family, this is a very large presentation. Actually, let me fast forward a little bit more. Let's get back to his comments. Right. But he said he's going to just leave it right here. The math doesn't add up. And again, so many pastors try to explain. Try to explain it. Just trying to explain it. They try to come up with all kinds of ways to explain trying to get three days into a day and a half. The math doesn't add up. And you know, when you, when you start asking them questions, right? Like if your job, like one of the elders in our ministry, he, he uses, he used this question, right? He asked the question, okay, if your job told you on a Friday, take the next three days off, right? What day are you returning to work, <laughs> right? What day are you returning to work? If you are told that, hey, you have a three day weekend. A three day weekend. What day are you coming to work? Are you coming to work on Sunday? Are you coming to work on Monday? Or are you coming to work on Tuesday after the three day? Week? What day are you showing up? And so what be, what tends to happen is when you have many of these Christians cornered. Then all of a sudden they start they they start talking like this. I was like, a hawk, a hawk. You know, girl, right. oh no. Exactly. Right? And the bird did what? Ooh, I said, a uh, bird. Get back. Fly up, fly away. Yeah. Be gone. Bye. Up in the sky. Nice try. Bye. They start sounding like that. <laughs> right? They start sounding like that. They've come up with all kinds of ways to try to make the math add up. And I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, if anyone can figure out how to squeeze. Three days into a day and a half. You will be the champion of the church right now, champion of the Christian Catholic Church or the Catholic Christian Church church you would be a champion right now and i want to give shout outs to rockstar uh in that clip that you know he he brother man is doing amazing work one of the best voiceovers you can that, that that's on the internet you know i'm surprised he don't actually have a show or uh anyway i leave that alone so shout outs to rockstar uh where where the clip comes from but anyway family the math doesn't add up It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. All right. So let's let's build on this. Let's let's build on this family. Like the old school used to say, common is not com uh, common sense is not common to everyone. And technically, we're not supposed to uh, uh, go off the common sense doctrine because common sense basically common consensus, right? According to the common consensus, we're supposed to honor and celebrate Easter. And according to the common consensus, Christ raised, he was raised from the dead. 
in three days, but technically, according to them, a day and a half. According to the common consensus, they treat or they'll say that for the death, burial and resurrection, they call it an allegory. That's the only set of dates they call an allegory. They don't they, they don't challenge the 40 days and 40 nights as far as the wilderness. They don't challenge any of, you know. Any other dates that's inside the scriptures. But they challenge this one right here, trying to make the math add up. <laughs> right. But anyway. Let's touch on a couple of things, family. Let's let's lay a couple of things down. Let's lay the foundation here. Because I know you have some brews, right, that are out here teaching that no one knows what the days are. Family, I'll make it clear. When you study calendars, it's never been a question of the seven-day cycle. The seven-day cycle is duly noted. But it's the calendars, in other words, based upon the feast days that have been the issue. And then when you understand the Gregorian calendar, it was all about Easter, according to the Roman Catholic Church. But let me just give you some simple information on this so that way you guys can understand this. Who created the Gregor uh, Gregorian calendar? Just a little history here, brief history. The Gregorian calendar was instituted by Pope Gregory. Gregorian? Gregory? The 13th, let me say that again, the Gregor Gregorian calendar was instituted by Pope Gregory the 13th in 1582 and quickly adopted by much of Catholic, but not Protestant Europe, right? The Protestants didn't embrace this initially. The reform altered the Julian or old style system of leap years and by removing 10 days from October in 1582 adjusted the timing of the Easter observance so it better coincided with the spring season. That's the primary reason why you have the Gregorian calendar. Let me say that again. That's the primary reason why you have the Gregorian calendar. The issue was never about the seven day cycle, because as Israelites, the most high has given us a way to always pinpoint when the new year starts with Israel. Guess what? It didn't start the new years. Israel's new years is not this uh, uh, this upcoming. Uh, what you call it? Uh, eclipse. Israel's new year is the first new moon after the spring equinox. The spring equinox, right, already occurred, which tend to happen, tend to occur between the 20th and 22nd. The first new moon. So the first new moon is actually on the same day as it as the eclipse which is the eighth. That is the new year for Israel. So how are many of our brothers and sisters celebrating the Passover on the eighth? That's a new moon. And brothers and sisters, the total eclipse is not for the whole day, right? It's not for a whole day. It's for a brief moment, a quick moment. So it's the, the first new moon after the spring equinox is Israel's first day. You add 14 days to that, and that'll take you to April 22nd. That is Passover. 
The Feast of Unleavened Bread begins on the 23rd, which would be the next day, the 15th day of the month. When you study the scriptures, Easter, not Easter, excuse me, forgive me. I bind that up, right? So, let me let me do my go my grandmother mode. I bind that up. But the Passover, Pasach, when Israel came out of Egypt, when you study the scriptures, it was at the height of the full moon. The 14th is the 15th is the height of the full moon. And we'll deal with that shortly. We already rebuilt the calendar in the first lesson. But we got it. We have some more uh, meat that we left on the bones. Right. So, again. Again, that's right. That's right. Berean scholar. The devil is a liar. Right. <laughs> that my grandmother would pull that out. So come on, family. And I'm going to drop the link because I see um, Apostle uh, Curtis in the building. I want to say shout outs to Apostle Curtis. I want to say shout outs to Berean Scholar. I want to say shout outs to Sister Carol. I'm going to drop the link here in a second as we lay this out here. So, again, family, I know we have some brothers and sisters that already celebrated the Passover. They just celebrated. I'm like, wait a minute. How can you celebrate the Passover? So, you're saying that that is the. I, I'm not even going to try to make math, uh, make, 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 uh, explain the logic. I'm not going to explain the logic. No, that's, that's completely incorrect. Uh, let me say this here to this person here, George Foreman or, or Freeman. You're absolutely incorrect. Again, the first new moon after the spring equinox, not the new moon before the spring equinox, because now you're getting into Purim. Purim is the is in the twelfth month, right? According to the Gregorian calendar, but it's the twelfth month, which would be in March. You're absolutely incorrect. It's not before the spring equinox. So let's let's knock that thing down. I got I got sources. There's plenty of sources you can start looking up and reading. So I want to make sure we clear on that, family, you know, because, uh, you know, people start making posts and com uh, posting comments inside the uh, chat. You know, no, nah, we, we, we don't do that here. So, no, the new moon is the first new moon for as Israel after the spring equinox not before the spring equinox because based upon that logic then basically the equinox around that time frame it'll be israel honoring passover and the new the spring equinox is the roman celebration it's the greeks new year's celebration it's other cultures new year's celebration so let's reel that back in, family. Let's reel that back in, all right? Like my grand grandmother would say, the devil is a liar, all right? So again, I'm going to keep this simple, right? We're going to we're going to unpack this thing. But we see here the Gregorian calendar by removing ten days from October, right? So the the uh, Pope Gregory. Remove 10 days from the calendar of October in 1582 to try to make the numbers work. But it was all about making sure Easter fell at a certain time of the year. With Israel, it's different. <laughs> it's different. The season of Abib, <laughs> just even understanding the season of Abib knocks down that whole uh, teaching that the new moon fell on before the spring equinox. <laughs> Come on, family, if you understand Abib. Anyway, all right. So it goes on to say here, 
adjusted the timing of the Easter observance so that it better coincided with the spring season. Many of the countries that adopted the Gregorian calendar already recognized January 1st as the beginning of the new year until it adopted the reformed calendar in 1752. However, England dated its new year at March 25th or the observance of Lady Day, in other words, the Feast of the Annunciation. As a result, many English correspondents and public publications, including some in Virginia, marked those days between January 1st and March 25th during the years 1582 to 1752, with two years, in other words, the old style, all right? But then let's talk about the Julian calendar because we already know that Pope Gregory, right? Uh, it's the one that pushed that Gregorian calendar. Let's deal with the Julian calendar. Excuse me for the typo here. And we already, uh, you, you know, you'll know when you just see the name of a Julian, right? Julius Caesar. So in 45 BC, Julius Caesar ordered a calendar consisting of 12 months based on a solar year. The calendar employed a cycle of three years of 365 days, followed by a year of 366 days. In other words, leap year. So leap year, as we see here, cre was created in, by the Julian calendar. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. All right. I'm just looking at the comments because periodically I have to make sure that we do this correctly. You know, let me kick these people out here. You know what I mean? Grass turning green. <laughs> Doesn't my grass, my grass stay green year round. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, family. Let's stop this. Grass turning green has nothing to do with this. Uh, uh, you know, the spring or the equinox starting before early. No, the spring equinox has always been where it is. That's why it's called the spring equinox. Do the history. Do Just look it up. Just look up spring equinox, 20 through the 22nd. And moderators, if you see people inside this, uh, the chat trying to, uh, you know, teach, uh, something contrary because they're going way out of left field, uh, you know, with this whole grass. No, the season of a beeb doesn't start before the spring equinox. Just do the, just look it up and do the history on the, the season of a beeb. But anyway, let's leave it alone, family. But I want to make it clear, family. This is why, you know, when we start dealing with, uh, you know, teaching history, and what we see these trolls inside, and I'm going to call it trolls, inside the chat, this is what happens. They don't do this on any other platform. They don't go to the Jewish community. They don't even go to the Christian church. The same people that sit here and say that, hey, you know, why don't we have, uh, you know, pastors teaching this truth? But then you do have pastors and leaders trying to teach this truth. And then we have trolls like this coming up on there. To be a distraction. Don't have time for it. Trolls tro create your YouTube channel, then you teach whatever you want to teach. All right, family, my apologies for uh, addressing that foolishness. You know, you try to give uh, give a person a little leeway, but then the trolling side come out and they start taking trying to take a narrative way out of left field. But anyway, let's take it back here. The Julian calendar. In 45 BC, Julius Caesar ordered a calendar consisting of 12 months based on a solar year. This calendar employed a cycle of three years of 365 days, followed by a year of 366 days. In other words, leap year. When first implemented, the Julian calendar also moved the beginning of the year from March 1st to January 1st. However, Following the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century, the new year was gradually realigned to coincide with Christian festivals until the 7th century 
Christmas, Christmas Day marked the beginning of the new year in many countries. So family, it had nothing to do with the seven day cycle, but it had everything to do with honoring feast days. Think about it. The Roman Catholic Church came up with the Gregorian calendar so that way they can keep the their Easter celebration in a certain timeline to keep it like what we see today. You notice how it uh, they kind of block it into this time of the year. Sometimes it may go a little a uh, little for, uh, deeper into April, but for the most part, they keep it around this time of the year. Sometimes they'll go with the first new moon after the spring equinox and other times they'll go with the first full moon after the spring equinox and that's just so that way they can make whatever adjustments that they want to make to keep the uh their easter celebration in a certain time frame but the most high has given israel a bookmark to start our new year this is why he said uh this month is it shall be a new month right to you. And what he's referring to is the new moon, that new moon, right? During the what? Season of Abib, which is the ripe harvest, right? Anyway, not going to too in depth with that study. I do have a lesson on that in the foundational, uh, uh, in the foundational uh, playlist, as well as the holiday playlist. So, and I encourage you guys, go watch that lesson. Watch part one and I lay out the understanding of the spring equinox, right? The uh, autumn equinox. No, no. The spring equinox, uh, as well as the uh, winter solstice, right? Two solstice, also two. Yeah, I was correct. You have the uh, equinox that are that's in um, that's in uh, March. Then you have the fall and September. But then you have what is called the solstice. One is in uh, June and the other is in December. All right. So we'll continue to address this family. But again, uh, this is why we have I mean, it's, it can be very confusing. The issue was never about the seven day cycle. Right. These calendars are made, especially when we look at, uh, for example, this Gregorian calendar. It was all based upon honoring the days that the Christians created for us, their pagan holidays. All right. So is Easter in the Bible, right? Is Easter in the Bible family? Is Easter in the Bible? I'm going to ask that question to you guys, family. Is Easter in the Bible? Right. Let's let, let's see some of your comments here. Uh, let's start with be kind. Well, actually, we'll start with the word made flesh. All right. Heck nah. He said, heck nah. I haven't heard that in ages. Heck nah. All right. Be kind. No. Sister Carol. No. Elder in the building. Family. Let's let's give some um, some love to the elder in the building, holding it down in California. Hallelujah. Right. Uh, said no said no all right let's see here i am peace no uh let's see here chaffron no all right who else do we have here man you guys are man this chat is going pretty fast i'm gonna have to slow this figure out how to slow this down all right if i miss some of you guys because this chat is going going fast here i gotta slow it down all right all right suo no Shah Rhonda, no. Uh, Kia, no. Daughter of Zion, no. Base, no. Eli Yahoo, no. Yaquaba, no. Uh, royalty, no. Calvin, no. All right. Let's see here. Maureen, no. Suo, no. Uh, we, 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 we already got your first answer. I, I don't know where you're going. Jerry Carroll, no. Right. Byron, no. All right. Let's see here. Who else? We'll do a couple more. Malik Daw uh let's see. Yeah, Malik Dawad Dawad, no. Uh right trust. Uh why Donnie McClurkland. 
Uh, you have to watch the beginning of the lesson. Uh, Donnie McClurkin said the math doesn't add up. So go back to the beginning of the lesson. When you uh, reviewed the lesson here, uh, Donnie McClurkin said the math doesn't add up. He was referring to, hey, wait a minute. If Christ, uh, if he said he said in the scriptures three days and three nights, then what's what's up with the uh, the Good Friday? Uh, Friday to so-called Sunday morning, the math doesn't add up. So that's why I said, um, you know, using Donnie McClurkin. All right. Tice Nah. Let's see here. Yaakwab Nah. Let's see who else. A couple more. Yah's son. Shout outs to Yah's son. No. All right. All right. So uh, one, we'll do one more here. Lamara. No. Or Lamira. Excuse me. No. All right. So the math doesn't add up, family. We already agree. The math doesn't add up. And guess what? Uh, many said, hey, Easter is not in the Bible. All right. For those that said that Easter is not in the Bible. Right. How do we reconcile this? What I'm getting ready to read to you. This is coming from Acts chapter 12, because this is how this is what Christians will point out. They'll go to the Bible. Actually, I actually dealt, dealt with this with some brews. Right. They will go to the Bible, the KJV Bible. Right. And they'll pull this on you. Now, about that time, King Herod, the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And we know we're not dealing with the church. We're dealing with Israelites here. Right. This is not dealing with the church family. This is dealing with Israelites. This is uh, the uh, blood descendants of Israel that is following. Christ. So that word church. Right. Shouldn't even be there. The word ecclesia. Right. That word means called out assembly. The Israelites, when you look at the in-depth definition. So King Herod stretched forth his hands, his hands to vex certain the followers, the Hebrew followers of Christ. Because King Herod would be in all kinds of trouble if he called himself killing Romans. <laughs> right. Come on now. He'd be in all kinds of trouble. He was put in place by the Romans. So it goes on to say, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased Judah, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then there, it said, then were the days of unleavened bread. So this tells you this is around the feast days. This is the feast days. We know this is, then there was the days of the, of unleavened bread, which is normally the 15th day of the month. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and, del and delivered him up, um, to, excuse me, and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Family. We know that they didn't say Easter. The Greek. As you see here is Pascha, Pascha. So how did they get Easter here? Come on, family. Now some would say, "Well, Pastor, you know, uh, that's you know the, the this is the New King James, right?" But let's see what the sixteen eleven says. That's transliterated, right? Let's go to the same verse four. Right. Let's see what the KJV says. The 1611. That's transliterated over to English. Let's see what it says. Oh, we see Easter. We see Easter here. You guys see Easter. This is the 1611 Bible and transliterated over to English. So, family, we see agendas here. And don't get me wrong. You know, I, I, I have my KJV. In our scriptures, we deal with KJV. Right? But again, there are things that are lost by way of translations. There are certain things that are lost by way of translations. 
family, regardless of what Bible you choose, you're going to see discrepancies, whether it's the Geneva Bible. No, I, I, I roll with the KJV. Geneva, you know, uh, I, that's a whole nother discussion. But nevertheless, the Geneva Bible, the KJV Bible, the ESV Bible, they are all uh, transliterated off the same manuscripts. So that's a plus. But there are discrepancies in transliterations. All right. So whether you see Passover in your Bible and uh, the version that you're using, and as we see here, Easter in this one, I could go to other trans, uh, texts that have been when you look at the translation issues. All right. But again, I'm not knocking whatever those whatever you guys choose, uh, because, again, those are still based off the same manuscripts as far as the Geneva Bible, uh, the ESV Bible. I don't I definitely don't rock with the N, uh the NIV, those Bibles. And there's a whole nother discussion off of that. But anyway, what we see Easter here. All right. So what is the Greek word that was transliterated to Easter? I gave you the answer. Pascha. Right. And um, so when we go here, we see Pascha, right? Or Pascha, the Passover. But where do we, how did this word Easter make it here? And then when we look at the in-depth definition of Passover, and for those that are still connect, may still be connected to the church watching this, look at what it says about the uh, Pascha or the Passover, not this Easter stuff. The Paschal sacrifice, which was accustomed to be offered for the people's deliverance from, of, excuse me, of, of old from Egypt. And then it says, entry number two, the Paschal lamb, an example, the lamb, the Israelites were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month of Nisan, the first month of their year, in memory of the day on which their fathers preparing to depart from Egypt were bidden by God to slay and eat lamb and sprinkle their doorposts, uh, right? Sprinkle blood on the doorposts with his blood that the destroying angels seeing the blood might pass over the, their dwellings. Christ crucified is likened to the slain Pascal lamb. And then we have the Pascal supper. In other words, the Passover su uh, supper, which is also referred to as the last supper. Right. You have some many Christians, you know, that are teaching the word that uh, really believe that the Passover supper, the Passover has nothing to do with Christ. That that meal that they were having had nothing to do with Passover. Anyway, so what is Easter real quick? What is Easter? And we'll get to some some key points that I want to make when we get back to the calendar. What is Easter? Right. I want to knock down another thing because you have some 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 people that have been trolling with a particular talking point. I'm going to bring it up here in a second. But what is Easter? This is Easter springtime sacrificial festival named for the Saxon goddess Iastre or Astera, a northern form of Astarte. Her sacred month was uh, Estre Monath. In other words, the moon of Iastre. Saxon poets apparently knew Iastre was the same goddess as India's great mother Kali. Beowulf spoke of Ganges, uh, Ganges uh, water, or should I say Ganges waters, whose floodways ride down into an unknown sea near Iastre's far home. The Easter Bunny was older than Christianity. It was the moon hair sacred to the goddess in both Eastern and Western nations, recalling the myths of Hathor, Astarte, who laid the golden egg of the sun. Germans used to say the hare would lay eggs for good children on Easter Eve. It goes on to say, like all the church's movable feast, Easter shows its pagan origins in a dating system based on the old lunar calendar. It is fixed as the first Sunday after the first full moon after the spring equinox. 
formerly the pregnant phase of Eastre, passing into fertile season. The Christian festival wasn't called Easter until the goddess name was given to it in the Middle Ages. Right. And it tells us to see what the menstrual calendar. That's a whole nother discussion. Right. The Irish kept Easter on a different date from that of the Roman church, probably the original date of the festival of Eastre until the Roman calendar was imposed on them in 632 A.D. Nevertheless, the Columban foundation of their colonies in Britain kept the old date for another 50 years. The Persians began their solar new year at the spring equinox. And up to the middle of the 18th century, they still followed the old custom of representing each other with colored eggs on the occasion. Eggs were always symbols of rebirth, which is why Easter eggs were usually colored red. The life color especially is, excuse me, in Eastern Europe. Russians used to lay red eggs. Easter eggs on graves to serve as resurrection charms. In Bohemia, Christ was duly honored on Easter Sunday and his pagan rival on Easter, Eastern Monday, which was the moon day opposed to the Sunday. Village girls like ancient, well, I didn't put it all up here. My apologies, family. All right. But nevertheless, the Persians began this solar new year at the spring equinox. But another point I want to get here, since we've dealt dealing with the Persians, right? I really want to deal with Esther real quick because, you know, I've seen some people and I want to I think they're from the conscious community trolling of saying Esther. Right. Her name, Esther, is paying homage to Eastre or Astarte. Or is star. So, family, let's give clarity to this because there's a lot of things that junk doctrine that are out here. But let's look at, you know, uh, what 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 Esther names is, Ace Tar, right? Uh, depending on how you pronounce this, with a t heart or eighth. But nevertheless, let's go with, with the heart. So this would be Ace Star, right? A star, right? So just, just pronouncing this in the Israeli, all right? So we see here, Persian deri derivation, Esther, the Jewish heroine, heroine, Esther. And we see here, Esther equals star, right? Now, many will try to use this by saying, hey, saying Esther's name, you're paying homage to the Persian goddess come on family we have to stop with that because esther actually the persians that was her persian name but she had a hebrew name so whenever you hear this family take it to the scriptures but notice what it says here the queen of persia heroine of the book of esther daughter of abihel cousin and adopted daughter of mordecai of the tribe of benjamin made queen made queen by King uh, Asar, uh, excuse me, Hasaris to replace divorced Queen Vashti or Vashti. All right. So it said, uh, so going, so, so giving clarity here, Esther, the name is of Persian origin, which means it connects to the word star or stara that aligns with the Persian goddess Ishtar. But guess what? They were Esther was not referred. I mean, was not being praised and worshipped like as if she was a god or goddess. You know, you have many Greek names, you have many Roman names, you have many Egyptian names, you have a number of names that in their culture or different cultures, their names is going to be connected to whatever deities that they that the uh, the local people worship. So, with Daniel was given a Babylonian name that pointed to the deities of the Babylonians. But Daniel still had a Hebrew name. Likewise, we see with Esther. Let's let me show you what is Esther Hebrew name. Let me prove it to you. Her name is Hadassah. That is Esther's real name. 
So let's make sure we understand this. Esther's Hebrew name is Hadassah. And we'll see this in Esther chapter two, verse seven. And he brought up Hadassah, right? And you see, see here, Hadassah, that is Esther Astar Thar, right? This is, this is what you actually see in the scripture as, you know, as, excuse me, I'm clearing my throat, as a thar. That would be her name uh, written out in the Hebrew, Asathar. Esther, Asathar, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. And who gave her this name? Right? Who gave her this name? Right? This wasn't given to her by the Persians. So when you even understand, for example, Apostle Paul. Paul is his Roman name. Saul is his Hebrew name. Pretty straightforward. Paul did not change his name from, uh, from Saul to Paul. Paul was his Roman name. Many Israelites had dual names. Not just Israelites, other cultures. So I just want to point that out, family. This is one of the things that many would try to use to say, hey, look, see, Esther is pointing to Istar. No, that's why I want to knock that down real quick, just in case you guys uh, have that pop up on your doorsteps. So I just want to make sure we understand. All right. So again, you know, uh, this is the, uh, what you see on your screen is actually what's in the scriptures. Asathar. That's her actual name written out in Hebrew. Asathar. Just want to say that again. All right. But anyway, family, uh, just want to make sure we understand that uh, laying the foundation here. Now, another key prophecy I want to give just to lay this foundation. I just want to lay that out there, you know, but we can get into the deep water here. I'll drop the link here in a second. But uh, one one last thing I want to lay down here. Daniel chapter nine, verse twenty five. This is a key prophecy, family. Know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, right? Mashiach, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three scores, two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah, Mashiach, be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined verse 27 and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even unto the consummation and that uh determined so let's deal with the middle of the week now we could point this to 70 AD the destruction of the temple right but we can also look at this like hey the middle of a week a seven day cycle in the midst of the week ka uh, tazai, right? Or ka tzai, right? However you want to pronounce it, but ka tzai, or ta, excuse me, ka tzaya, or ka tzai. I'm saying it two different ways because some will pronounce uh, this as taza in the ancient Hebrew, and some would pronounce it tzade. So make a tza sound. So ka tzai or ka tza. Or katzai, and some will even pronounce the ya at the end of say katzaya. All right, but the key is what is the what what does this word mean? What does miss mean? Let's see what it means. To have, divide, missed. All right. So what does this word mean? Again, have, divide, miss. In other words, in the middle. Let me back it up here. We see you here. Cut. To, to have, cut in two, to divide, to be divided. So it's saying in the middle of this week, 
in the middle of the week, things the sacrifice is going to stop. It's going to cease. So miss means to divide, cut into middle. What day is in the middle of the week? Okay, family, what day is in the middle of the week? What, what, what? All right. What day is on the middle of the week? I'm just looking at some of the comments here. Let's see here. I'm looking at some of the comments because you got a lot of. Uh, all right, just looking here. All right. See, Sister Karen and Yas son and some of the other moderators are handling the chat. Really appreciate you guys. Because, yeah, it's a lot of crazy, you know, crazy. Um, I mean, not crazy, but trolls that are trolling here. All right. But anyway, let me see here. All right. Uh, let's see here. Someone's saying you won't see the new moon on uh, that. That makes absolutely no sense. And, and, and the new moon, uh, I encourage you guys to pull up a calendar and look at the progressions of the moon. And you will see the new moon is a piece of the calendar, not the full moon. So let's 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 uh, be very respectful here and let's not even sit up here trying to we're, we're not sitting here to try to indul um, insult those that are in the camps. You know, so even making comments like camp doctrine, no, uh, you know, uh, no disrespect to those that are in those camps, you know, and we know that they have a one West doctrine. But we're not here trying to insult anyone. You know, they have their way of doing it inside many of the camps. And those that are outside the camps have their have the, have certain doctrines that they, they teach. So let's not be uh, disrespectful in the comment because you disagree with someone. You know, I challenge you, the person that posted that, pull up the moon schedule, the moon cycle. It's called the new moon for a reason. As soon as you see what a piece of that moon, that's a new moon, not a full moon. All right. So I want to just uh, give a little clarity here because I saw an insulting comment here by someone uh, mentioning uh, camp doctrine. And I'm going to remove that here. You know, not trying to disrespect anyone here. All right. Not trying to disrespect anyone here. We surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. We don't need to. Um, disrespect anyone just to get a point across. All right. So let's go ahead and continue here. What is what day is the middle of the week? All right. Let's see here. Let's see some of the comments here and we'll get back into it. We all know it, but I just got I'm just asking some basic questions. Let's see here. The fourth day. All right. Fred Davis, uh, Sister Stephanie Bailey, Wednesday. That's right. And we're going to get into Exodus 12. Uh, Og, B, Og B, B or Og Bebe, excuse me if I mispronounce your name, Wednesday. Let's talk Wednesday. Daily Repentance Wednesday. Seasons Wednesday. TR Wednesday. My brother Berean Scholar Wednesday. Uh, Sharonda Wednesday. Ernest Higgs Wednesday. Fox Legend Wednesday. Uh, Elizabeth Bras uh, Braswell Wednesday. Yah's son. Oh, he, he's um, responded to the many inside the chat. All right. Really appreciate you guys. All right. Let's see here. Uh, who else do we have here? All right. Let me do some um, shout outs real quick. Shout outs to uh, Apostle Curtis. Thank you for the love and support. Matter of fact, let me drop the link here. Uh, so if you want to jump in while I'm doing this lesson, feel free to do so. Likewise, uh, I know Sister Carol is in the building. Benet, if you're there, you want to jump in, feel free to do so. Also, Berean Scholar. So I dropped the link here. All right. But Apostle Curtis, really appreciate the love and support. Family, support his channel. Uh, go to his channel. Subscribe to his channel. He's doing a great work among this awakening. And if you're down in the Louisiana area, look him up. If you're even down in the Houston area, look him up. 
JT, let's see here. Uh, thank you for the love and support. Really appreciate it. Delina, thank you for the love and support. And then we have the elder, uh, Bithaya, Batya, Yashara Al. All right. Let's see here. Let me see here. Uh, I just had you up here. Um, I just don't know which calendar is correct. Make me want to holler, throw up both my hands. And that's why we keep it simple, uh, elder and family. I'm, I'm going to say this again. The first new moon after the spring equinox. Let me say it one more time. The first new moon after the spring equinox. That is Israel's new year. One last time. The first new moon after the spring equinox. That is as it can't make it any plainer than that. All right. Real quick before we um, continue, let me bring in uh, Berean Scholar. All right. How, how's it going, my brother? And if you if you're talking, unmute yourself. All right, Berean Scholar, you there? All right. Well, we'll continue on. We'll continue on. All right. He may be having some um, issues with his mic. All right. But anyway, let's get back to the lesson. All right. So you all you guys gave some great answers. We all know the middle of the week. All right. The fourth day, which is called Wednesday, or, you know, where we are right now. So that day would be the fourth day called as we uh, as it's called today, Wednesday. When was the day of preparation? Right. We're going to answer these questions. The day of preparation is before the high Shabbat. From evening to evening. All right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 27. Starting at verse 62. And there was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary sitting over against the sepulcher. Now, the next day that followed the day of preparation the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. All right. Uh, so the next day that followed that uh, the day of preparation. So we we're going to we're going to paint this picture. We're going to give you an illustration here. Let's confirm this with Mark 15, verse 42. And I'm using all the disciples. I'm, I'm using each one of their testimonies, their account to bring it all together. And now when the eve was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Shabbat, right? So the day of preparation was the day before the high holy day, which was a Shabbat. What Shabbat? If the Passover is in the middle of the week, right? The Passover was the day of the sacrifices and it ceased. What day is the high holy day? All right. So let's go to Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 53. And we given it now. We know Luke was not a disciple, but he was a historian. So I just want to be clear. He wasn't one of the 12 disciples, but he was a historian who followed Christ. All right. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in the a sepulcher that was hewn in a stone wherein never man before was laid and that day was the preparation and the sabbath or shabbat drew on let's go to another account john 1931 come on family this is how we have to make sure when we go into the scriptures we got to make sure that we're honoring deuteronomy 17 and deuteronomy 19 the law of two or three witnesses in order for that thing to be established. So Judah, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the day, excuse me, on the Shabbat day, for the Shabbat day was a high day. So we know that that next day was a high day. That's an indicator to give you an understanding that this high day wasn't the traditional Shabbat. So this is giving you an indicator, 
giving you a nugget here that the Shabbat, that high holy day, wasn't the traditional seven day Shabbat, which would fall on the seventh day of the week. All right. So remember, family, on Thursday, we began to put together this Hebrew calendar. All right. Now, real quick, before we go into this. All right. I'm going to bring our sister Carol. She disconnected. OK. All right. But let me just, uh, Berean Scholar, you there? You want to give a shout out real quick as we continue? Still there? Can you hear me? One second. I think I, think I got me right now. Yeah, yeah I'm here now. Okay. Uh, any comments you want to share as we progress here? Brian, Brian Scott, right on the head, brother. Okay, I think we have a delay here. Yeah, we, I, um, um, my brother, I uh, I share with you. All right, you going in and out, um, um Brian Scholar. All right. All right, Sister Carol. Let me reroute um, um, that. I'll, I'll fix that. Okay, he's going to drop out and come back. Sister Carol, you want to um, make make a comment? Yes, I just wanted to um, get people understand there is a difference between a full moon and a new moon. A full moon is the conclusion of a quarter of the moon. It's coming to an end. The moon moves in phases and quarters. So oh, since you ain't even got to explain that because well, you know why I mean, sis? we learned, we learned that in elementary school. I'm, yeah. I'm not and, why and, people not understanding this. And the reason why I'm saying this, because it's that simple family. It they, is. Just go to Google and type in the moon cycle. Period. <laughs> That's it. Instead of coming into the chats and trying to debate and reteach, just go to the moon cycles and you'll see exactly what a moon, the new moon is. And you'll see what the full moon is. Like Sister Carol pointed out, we learned this in, in man, I, I, I was the second or third grade yes. about the moon cycles. Correct. It's, it's just that simple, family. It's not and that deep. it happens deep. every week. The moon changes every week. Actually, truth be told, it changes daily. It's yes. just we don't notice it. It does daily, but for us, the quarters yeah. it changes every you know every quarter. It changes, so I'm not understanding why we're not understanding this. Uh, I don't understand why you're not reading Exodus 12. You're asking all well, these questions, but anyway, sis, go don't even worry about it. We're just gonna keep it going because that okay. that you know when we start dealing with that, it actually delays the lesson. It does. And I'm sorry for for those that are um uh, that truly are here to learn. We're, we don't mind answering your questions, but for those that are asking questions and not even taking upon yourself to, even when we give recommendations, I've said early on, just look up at, look up the moon. Right about that. I mean, you Google, you could just Google the new moons for the year. Yes. It's, it's just that simple. And I post the link in the chat. You know, if you, if you want to know about the Gregorian calendar, just Google the Gregorian calendar. If you want to know about the Julian calendar, just Google. You could take it a step further. If you want to learn the truth, let's just say, I know I said it yes, I mean, two days ago, the Book of Enoch. You can Google the Book of Enoch and get the truth about the Book of Enoch and some of the other stuff. Family, you know, the same energy that you're putting out, you know, to, to try to, uh, you know, kind of slow up or sometimes it can, you know, maybe end up well, in, not intentionally. But to slow up the teachings, just Google it and then confirm if you're being taught correctly. Anyway, uh, Berean, um, Berean Scholar, you was going to share something? Can you can you hear me now, brother? Yes, sir. Yeah, we, we, we struggle to hold on to our ignorance, don't we? Yeah. And we uh, I, I share with you in your text, we talk about that offline, how uh, some members of my... Uh, my formal uh, Kojic district responded to my video uh, about about the Good Friday, and he had a meeting to make a response about it to keep them, I guess, uh, make sure that, he, that I wasn't stirring up trouble in the church, I guess, because 
we struggled to hold on to the truth because they were saying, you're right, that the numbers don't don't add up. The numbers don't add up. Why don't why would we talk this? So you're right. We 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 have to simply stay to the word of God. Yah tells us what we need to know is in his word. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 um I'll open it up periodically as we go through this lesson. If you guys go ahead, buddy, um, keep doing it. Lay down. Yeah, and um, also I want to um, address something here because uh, another one of the uh, poor teachings that we were taught that five minutes, right? If let's just say those three hours uh, after the Messiah, just after the Messiah had uh, died, it was a, almost a three hour period that remained Whoa. in that day. According to many, they they teach that those three hours, it still counts for a full day. So even if it was five minutes of a day, it still counted as a full day. That makes absolutely no sense. It makes trying absolutely no work. sense. <laughs> try that math at work. Trying to make the math work. That's how they try to make the math work. But no, Christ go made to it work clear. And say, I work five minutes, pay me for the full day. <laughs> exactly. But the, but the scripture makes it clear. It makes it clear that um you know when we start uh dealing with what christ said christ said uh three days and three nights and he confirmed that with jonah three whole days right three whole nights that's dealing with the 24-hour cycle <laughs> right but anyway, but it, it's it's just that simple. But some make it um, harder than what it really is. And that's why we're using the scripture as our foundation. All right. But we're going to continue here. And, um, you know, and, and, and we'll we'll, uh, you know, open it up periodically for you guys to uh, chime in. All right. Appreciate it. All right. So, family, on your screen. Remember, in lesson that we did on Thursday night. Right. You remember this calendar. Remember, we reconstructed the first Hebrew calendar and we used the scriptures. We use scripture. So if we map this out, this is the first Hebrew calendar. And guess what? I can prove that Christ, when he was uh, lynched, right, was on. It lines up with the very first calendar. Right. Let's break this down. So the Passover and the day of preparation would be done on the 14th day of the month, right? And if you see here the 10th, that's when the lamb was selected. And let me make this clear because this is another thing. Some will say that, hey, selecting the lamb is work. No, it's not. See, family, when we understand sacrifices, even in the temple, sacrifices were done 24-7, 365, the temple was open for sacrifices. You could confirm that with Leviticus, I believe, chapter 2, and I believe also Leviticus chapter either 6 or chapter 7. The priests were responsible for keeping the fire burning and never letting it go out. In other words, allowing the people to come in to do sacrifices at any time to atone for their sins. So that means that they have to pick out their sacrifices. So we have to make sure we're not getting to that in those spaces by saying picking out a lamb is work. All right. So, all right. The Passover and day of preparation was on the 14th day. All right. So we're going to focus on this 14th day. Of course, the 15th day, that will be the feast of the unleavened bread. So what was the day of the lynching? Right. I just gave you the answer. It occurred on the day of preparation. So to accurately accurately determine the date of the lynching, we have to pinpoint the day of the Passover feast. Right. The Messiah's death is linked to the Passover. And let's go to the scripture. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse one. And it came to pass when Yahweh Shai, right, Jesus the Christ, had finished all these sayings. He said unto his disciples, ye know that after two days is the feast of Passover, the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. 
So we're getting some timelines here. So the initial Passover preceded the high Shabbat and uh, uh, the high Shabbat, which is the first day of unleavened bread. Christ is making it clear, right? So, of course, the 14th would be the Passover, the day of uh, unleavened bread. I mean, the day of preparation. The 15th would be the first day of unleavened bread, which is the high holy day. Let me say that again. Let me make sure you guys understand this, right? The Passover, the day of preparation, was on the 14th, which is the middle of the week. That's the day that the Messiah was lynched. Then on the 15th, the reason why they was racing to get him down before the new day came in, right? The evening, which would have been the 15th, which is the day, first day of the unleavened bread, which is a high holy day. So the high holy day was actually on the fifth day of the week. So this right here should open up some eyes here because we see multiple Shabbats here. We see multiple Shabbats. All right. And of course, the day of lynching was on the same day as the Passover, the day of preparation. Then we see you out here. The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate. Right. So, uh, you know, and this is where they wanted to. I mean, when, when they wanted to make sure that. Actually, I'm not going to get ahead of it. I was going to get ahead of myself. Let, let me keep it simple here. All right. But in a nutshell, they want to make sure they cover their tracks, that no one is there uh, trying to steal Christ's body. But anyway, so Numbers chapter 28, verse 16. Let's go here. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover. So we confirm this on the 14th day, the first month. And in Hebrew, you see the word Kadash. You have Kadash and you have Kwadash. Kwadash means holy. Kadash means renew. So we know, as Sister Carol pointed out, we know that the moon is not being recreated every month. It goes through a full cycle. And in that full cycle, then we see here, right, that first month, that new moon, that piece of that piece of that new moon. Not a full moon. That is the new moon. That first crack of that new moon. That is the new moon. Right. So uh, as we see here in the 14th day of the first month is it says is the Passover of Yahweh. And in the 15th day of the uh, uh, month of this month is the feast. So the 14th day is the Passover. The 15th day is the feast. And it says here, seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. So the Passover is on the 14th day, but then on the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the 15th. So for a, an entire week is celebrating Feast of Unleavened Bread. All right. So the Messiah was lynched the same day of the Passover, right? Lamb, the sacrifice. The lamb had to be slaughtered at a very specific time. All right. And we'll go here in Exodus chapter 12, verse six, Sister Carol made reference to it. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly called Quahal of the congregation, actually witnesses would be a better translation. I doth Yasharalal, right, shall kill shot, I mean, shot ta. Oh, excuse me, Shakat, it in the evening, Arab. So the Passover meal observance is commemorating the night that Yahweh passed over Egypt and killed the firstborn that were not covered by the blood of the lamb. And it wasn't just the Passover far as, well, um, uh, protecting the firstborn far as, of, uh, well, actually, it wasn't just the firstborn of Israel that was killed. It was also the firstborn of their cattle. So for Israel, that protected not just the house, but also their livelihood. That's the key family. It's not just protecting their lives, but also their livelihood. 
So which means that the Passover, Pasach, began at night, right? It began at night. Uh-oh. It wasn't during the day like you see in Israel. I mean, what, what's that? The Ten Commandments, guys? We see Israel coming out of uh, Egypt in its brightest day. No, family. It was at night. That's why it's important. It's important when you get this that there was a there was a full moon as Sister Carol laid out. That's the only way Israel could see at night. Because we didn't see the signs that was given later as far as the, Messiah, uh, the Most High giving the flame at night, the fire at night, and his hand during the day in the form of a cloud. I'm going to open up for you guys. Any comments before we progress? That is the classical condition that we have as Christians. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Uh, we've been conditioned by by what we see. The same. You know, that's why uh, Jacob had to put the, the spotted breast in front of the, the, the sheep because they he knew that if they saw those that those spotted breasts enough times, they would become what they see. And we've been seeing those lies so much that it's in it's engraved in our image in our mind in our psyche that we see the the people coming out of daytime we see the the color of the people come out of daytime these are the, the untrue that, the, that they have played on us for so long so when you actually see the truth sometimes you don't see the truth because you see the images within your mind and you know and to your point we were programmed they they hacked us they did a great hack yes job. you got to give them credit they were very very calculated with their hack job on us uh, Sister that Karen, that he was. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, um, Barain. I didn't, I didn't know you was still speaking. I would just, just, I'll, I'll be quiet. Just love the fact that it was the Passover, and Christ became the sacrificial lamb on that day. Absolutely, absolutely. Sister Carol, any thoughts? You're absolutely right. I was sorry. I was, um, just talking to someone in chat while you guys were talking. Um, you're absolutely right. What you were saying. Um. I'm with you on both of you guys. I'm sorry, I was mentioning that was messing some something back in the chat. Don't so yes, I see it. I see it. It's a lot of I just went on and just kicked some people out. I got you. I was trying to get this one young lady taken care of. People need to read. That's all I got to say. This this is becoming very monotonous. Yeah, that's right. That I'm just saying, if it gets to that point, you either um put them in timeout or completely put them out. I will. That's what I've been doing, putting them out. I'm not even putting them time out. I'm just putting them out because it's just, it's distracting. So go on. I'm sorry. All right. But I really appreciate the inputs. All right. We're going to continue as we've been doing and um, really appreciate everyone tuning in. But let's continue. All right. Let's continue. Like, let's go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. Let's lay, it, lay this down. We're going to use scripture. For I will pass through. I rob, I mean, I bar, excuse me, pass through I bar the land of Egypt this night, Lai La or Lai Yala, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. See, family, when we think about that blood being protected. Or, or for you being used for protection to cover us, it wasn't just for the firstborn of our families. It was also for our resources, as you see here. So in Egypt, it wasn't just the death of their firstborn, but also their, their animals. And against all the deities of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. So the commandment in honoring the Shabbat, we already know what it is, but I'll bring it up real uh bring it up real quick. Actually, did I put it up? No, I didn't put it here yet. We'll get to that in a second. Verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep a feast, keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. So in the in the Hebrew, where you see keep. You'll see the word uh, shamar. Shamar means execute. You shall execute. Ye shall execute. 
Am, amar, shall, amar is a commandment. This is not a suggestion. This is not a recommendation like the Roman Catholic Church teach. It says, this day shall be unto you for a memorial and ye shall keep. In other words, execute it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. In other words, instructions forever. So what day was the resurrection? We created the calendar yesterday. Today, we're going to pinpoint the resurrection. What day was it on? Let's go to Matthew 28, verse 1. In the end of the Shabbat, as it began to dawn, Toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, to the um, to the sepulcher. Right now, I don't see anywhere here that tells us that he was resurrected. It just said that early in the morning at the beginning of the week, the first day of the week, the Marys came just at the beginning of dawn. Bakar, the beginning of dawn to the sepulcher. Right. In the end of the Shabbat, that's what it says. In the end of the Shabbat, what Shabbat are they referring to here? I can tell you emphatically the seventh day Shabbat, the traditional Shabbat. We'll get there here. I'll get there in a second. The first day of the week. This is John 20, verse one. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Wait a minute, but they still say that it was still dark. But they don't say anything about seeing the Messiah being resurrected. It was he was already gone by the time they got there. They didn't get there, you know, uh, at the height of the night. They came at the early portion of the day, very early, while it was still yet dark. The transitions, as we talked about transitions, right? Yawam. Right. The morning or Bakar, actually, I mean, not Bakar. Uh, yeah. Bakar, the morning. Right. I rob the evening. Those are the two transitional periods of the day that you will see in the evening. You'll see uh, still see some light, but it's transitioning into the night. Bakar is the, is the reverse transitioning into the day, the light portion of the day. But it's still dark at those points of time. It's, it's little light. Right. Anyway. So. The Messiah had already risen by the time the Marys arrived. Let's go to Mark 16, verse 2. We'll see here. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Right? Luke chapter 24, verse 6. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. So they got there. He's saying he's he's gone. He he already rose up. He's he's gone. He's out of here. And this is at the crack of dawn. And he tell, he's telling them, the angel is telling them he's already gone. He's not here. So let's put bring this all together. The 14th, the day of Passover, the day of lynching. The 15th, the first day of unleavened bread, which is a high holy Shabbat. The first day of the week, the Marys discover an empty sepulcher, right? So, and let me bring that back up so you guys can see the visuals. But the question is, were there more than one Shabbat in this week? I think I gave you the answer. I'll bring this back up here. I, I may, may, I'm not sure if I need to play the Wheel of Fortune music, but the answer is on the screen. What do you think, guys? I think it's pr pretty obvious on the screen. Because the 15th is the day of unleavened bread, which is a high holy Shabbat. The 17th is the traditional Shabbat. Any comments? Thank you. Um, that was my argument of discussion in chat with this young lady named Sharon Baptiste, who is now blocked. She kept disrupting. Want to know um, Mark um, 15, verse uh, 42, what day of preparation was that before the Shabbat? That is the regular Shabbat, that, that Friday evening before um, the Shabbat happens, which is on the seventh day. Um, for as the week of Passover, you have several Shabbats that week. You have the Shabbat on the actual day that he was 
um, killed or lynched. You have, which is the Passover, you have the unleavened bread the next day. That's the last you just stated, a high holy day. And then the every day after that, the Shabbat, and then this, the actual Shabbat on the 17th. All of this was written in Exodus 12 and Leviticus 23. It's a foundational telling you about all of the feast days are high holy days. These are all Shabbats. And, and the key is that 16th, guess what? The Marys didn't come to the sepulcher. No. Exactly. And family, remember, they're still in the whole week, really was a whole week of celebration. For starting at the 15th, but yeah, we got multiple. Multiple. Yes. Carrie there was White, multiple Shabbats. So I'm just they're confused. They throw their hands no, up. No, I'm not even going. I'm, I'm just going to put that out of here. I think that's, just, that's the confusing point on it. Because uh, on that week, it had we had multiple Shabbats. Yes. And it, and and he that, it was a like most that. week. Exactly. He told us that in Exodus 12 and, and Leviticus Correct. 23, that the feast days are Shabbat. They'll be Shabbats unto you. Exactly. Period. Now, I'll say this real quick, because um, I see a comment by saying one thing we can't agree, the Most High will put this all back in order when Christ returns. But guess what, family? The Most High has already given us the tools to put it back and get back together. He's not telling us just to wait. We have the tools in front of us. Now, whether you guys agree to disagree or disagree, that's up to you. But the Most High has given us the tools. That's the reason why in Genesis, he made it clear that the sun, the moon, the stars, they are there for signs. So that way we know that no matter what happens with the calendars, we can reboot. Correct. We can reboot. That's why it's imperative. This is why I'll say it again. You know, when we understand the moons, like Sister Carol pointed out, Israel <laughs> makes sure they, uh, through the Most High, to stay separate from the other cultures. So, again, you know, we can look outside and see when, when the springtime is starting to come. Because you're getting signs. You'll start seeing more light during during the day. You'll also see uh, the trees. You also see the animals. We are given signs. The problem is we've been so dumbed down that we've been hearing the voice of man for so long that we don't even stop to pay attention to the signs. The signs are right before us. So many will say, hey, all the we don't know what time of day we is. We don't know what time. Yes, we do. Because the Most High gave us permanent signs, man. If the if the ancient people were able to accurately keep signs, <laughs> and they didn't have all the technology we have today, that part we've with all the technology, it actually dumped us down to be what depended on the ones that make the technology. <laughs> that and that the truth. So again, I understand the logic of saying we're just going to wait till Christ get back and he'll sort it out. No, nah, family, the scriptures tell us. It makes it clear. We've given, if Christ said, I mean, the Most High said that the Shabbat is a sign, we can't just brush it up under the rug because that's imperative for us to even understand the signs of what? The times that we live in. Pastor Kelly, when I get bit by a Texas mosquito, in March, that's when I know the season has changed. It's springtime. Man, you, don't, you that, that's not a mosquito. That's like a big animal. Yeah, it is. It's, it's a pterodactyl. That's what it it did. Pterodactyl. When they bite you, a stingy <laughs> man, they break your arm. You have it's to get. Right. You have to put your arm up in the sling. Yeah, all of that. You have to go to the hospital, <laughs> and emergency room. It must be kids to the ones in Mississippi. Yes, they, hey, you know Texas make everything big, so you know it's it's a bird. Yeah, yeah. So, family, this is why we want to uh, make it clear, family. You know, this is why I say we have to make the scripture our primary text. What we've been doing here is through Christianity and Catholicism is to make the scriptures secondary. Many are seeking uh, second and third party sources and making that as if it's the primary source. 
couple of days ago, we recreated the calendar with what? Using the scriptures as our primary source. All right. So let's get away from that that logic of thinking that there's no way it's impossible. No, it's it's very simple, family. That's why I'm I have it on the screen and we're walking this thing out. All right. We're walking this thing out, guys. And you have the calendar in front of you. I'm not going to go through the process of recreating the calendar to calendar tonight. Go watch the previous live and it gives it all to you. All right. Sister Carol, sound like you turn that keyboard up. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's get back into it, family. Let's get back into it. All right. And I'll open it up on, uh, you know, in the next um, space that we have here. All right. All right, let's continue on here. All right, let's see here. All right, were there more than one Shabbats this week? That's the question. Guess what, family? Let's re let's let's bring this all together because we can pinpoint the dates on the calendar, right? On the tenth day of the month, Hamashiach enters the city on a donkey, right? On the 14th day of the month is the Passover and the day of lynching, but it's also called the day of preparation. We see Mary empty uh, enters a an empty sepulcher as well, right? But we'll continue here, but let's put the other days up here. Let's break it down. Again, the 10th, Hamashayak enters the city on a donkey. He crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save me, save me. On the Passover, the, uh, the day of lynching, the day of preparation, was on the 14th. That next morning, while they were rushing to get him down off the cross, right? Because it was a high holy day approaching, which is the first day of the unleavened bread, which is a high holy day. That's why we see in the, the council of the disciples, we see high holy or high day. That's not the that's not dealing with the traditional seven day Shabbat. Then we see another Shabbat, which is the weekly traditional Shabbat, which is what the seventh day. All right. So this is the kicker. I want to make sure you guys understand. We're going to use the Greek to prove this because I'm going to show you this in the Greek. Let's go to the Greek word. We see Shab uh, Sabbaton. Notice what Sabbaton means. Right. It says the original and it makes reference to Shabbat. All right, family. So anyone that try to mock you by saying Shabbat. You can go right to this, take them to this definition because you got some uh, some some people within the church. A.K.A. What's that guy name? Pastor. Um, oh, I can't think of name. Oh, I can't think of his name. It'll come to me. Oh, man, I did something on him years ago. But anyway, there's a pastor out there that was mocking Israelites for saying Shabbat. And he was literally mocking, saying Shabbat, Shabbat. Craig Lewis, oh, Craig. that's his name. Pastor C.K. Lewis. He was saying Shabbat, Shabbat. What is Shabbat? It's Sabbat. It's Sabbat. Or Sabbath. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? As you see here, you see Shabbat. Anyone that try to mock you for saying Shabbat, guess what? They're wrong. Sabbath is, you know, a transliteration. It's actually Shabbat. All right. But it goes on to say here. Right. The Sabbath, an example, Shabbat. Guess what it says? It says, or day of weekly. Right. So this can be a day of a weekly Shabbat. But notice what it says here. By extension, it goes on to say uh, the interval between two Shabbats. In other words, it says here, likewise, the plural in all the above applications. So there's a Sabbath day. And then you see here a Sabbath what? Week. That's the key, family. Let me pull this back here. Let's look at here. I'm going I'm to zoom in on the in-depth definition so you guys can see here. It says here, 
and the a new seventh moon. day of the week, the whole moon, which is- was what's that, Sister Carol? It says here, uh, and I, seventh I day it. of. I mean, muted out here. I think um, um brother Berean, uh, I mean not brother Berean, Berean scholar is having some issues with his audio. All right, my apology. I'm just muting it out, family. I thought he was saying something, but his his mic, it sounded like he's playing a a, a, a reverb, uh, a echo. All right. So notice you see here, family, entry number one. We just read this here in the page rip effect. But let's go down here. Let's look at entry number one and entry number two. Entry number one, the seventh day of the week, which was a sacred festival on which the Israelites were required to abstain from all work. Then we see sub entries A and B, the institution of the Sabbath, the law for keeping holy every seventh day of the week. Now we see entry number B, I mean, entry B rather, a single Sabbath, Sabbath day. But then we see in entry number two, seven days a week. So guess what, family? The Shabbat can be a single day. It can be a week. And do you know that there there was actually a year? That Israel has a Shabbat year? That they're supposed to allow the ground to heal itself? So that word Sabbaton, right? I'm going to show you that it's multiple. So Sabbaton in Greek means Seventh day, seventh day of the week, a single Sabbath day, but also seven days. In other words, a week of Shabbats. All right. So let's go to Matthew chapter 28, verse one. Let's confirm this. Now, this is the interlinear Bible. Right, family. And if you don't have an interlinear Bible, matter of fact, you could. I'm just going to look this up, the, uh, this link. And I'm going to drop it in the comment section so you guys could follow along here. All right. Let me type it up in here. I believe it's scripture for all. All right. And in it on scripture for all, they have both the Hebrew and the Greek. So it's a good tool. It's the interlinear Bible online. And, um, you know, you can also purchase an interlinear Bible. Right. And that gives you a uh, word for word transliteration of the text. Right. Both in Hebrew and the Greek, or you could just purchase it. Well, I'm going to drop the link inside the comment section if you guys want to uh, peep this link out as we prog- uh, as we progress, as as we doing this together. So here's the link right here. Right. This is the PDF to what I'm getting ready to read. All right. All right. So notice what it says here. All right. I'm going to zoom it in. OK, it says one lighting into one of Sabbaths. Came. Do you guys see that? It's it's making it clear. One of Sabbaths came. All right. But let's go to Mark 16, chapter 2. And let me get the interlinear Bible that I'm going to read from. So that way you guys can have it. And I copy it. I'll paste it inside the comment section. 16. Right. Verse 2. And you guys, you guys have this for your record. All right. And there it is, because we're not just going to use one scripture. We're going to use multiple. Notice what it says here. Very morning of the one of Sabbaths. Right. So we see here the full translation here. Very early in the morning of the one of Shabbats or Sabbaths. But we're not going to stop there. Let's go to Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Right? Let me get let me get the um Luke passage here real quick. And I'm going to t- copy it inside the comment section. So that way you guys can can um vet the information yourself. All right, let me do it real quick here. All right. All right. Now it says here to the yet one of the Sabbaths of early. Okay. 
Now let's go to John chapter 20, verse one. To the yet one of the Sabbaths, right? So we see that there were what? Multiple Sabbaths, multiple Shabbats. Let me put this in there as well. I know I'm giving you guys sources, but hey, that's how we do. Want to make sure you guys have the direct link, which you can vet. All right, this is John 20, verse one. So I'm going to drop this inside the comment section. So that way you guys can download it at your leisure. All right, here we go. All right. All right, there we go. Okay. So there are no contradictions in the accounts. Why? Because each scripture says the same thing. There were multiple Shabbats. Let me go back here to make sure we clear here. There were multiple Shabbats in this day. So let me go back here to the calendar. We just proved it even in the translations. Shabbat, right? When we see Sabbaton, right? That, that, that's not just saying singular, but it's also plural. So the plurality in the Greek, we see multiple Shabbats in the week. And we see that even in the translations, it tells you at the beginning of the week, the first day is when the Marys came to the temple. So after the Shabbats, plural, is when they came. So we see here, there's multiple Shabbats here. The 15th, the first day of unleavened bread, and the seventh day weekly Shabbat. All right. So I just want to make sure I reiterate that point. Let me get to one other thing and we'll uh, I'll, I'll open it up again. So I want to make it make sure you guys understand there are no contradictions in the accounts. So what is the importance of honoring the Shabbat? Let's just touch on this real quick. Is it a sign? Hebrew dictionary definition of sign. We covered this before, but just to bring it back, a signal, evident, mark, miracle, proof. Then we go to Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Shabbats ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am Yahweh that doeth sanctify you. So you see that the Shabbat is a sign, not a temporary sign. It's a sign forever for who? The children of Israel. So is honoring the Shabbat and the Passover strictly for Israel? Well, no. Why? Because if we go to Exodus chapter 12, starting at verse 48, guess what? They could, uh, non-blood descendants of Israel can honor the, the feast days, the Passover, but there's a, a, a set of requirements. It says, and when a stranger that sojourned with thee and will keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be what? Circumcised. And then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. And this is Exodus chapter 12. And it goes on to say one law, Akha, one law, Thawara, shall be unto him that is home born, Azarach, and unto the stranger, Gar, that sojourneth among you. So one law, it wasn't multi, um, different laws. Hey, here's a law for the Israelites. Here's a law for the non-Israelites, the non-blood descendants of Israel. It's always been one law. It's the Christian Catholic Church that pushed this nonsense as if the Most High gave, gave one covenant to the non-blood descendants of Israel and another covenant to the blood descendants of Israel. That's completely farce. Isaiah 56, chapter 2, and then I'll open it up here again. Neither let the son of the strangers that have sojourned himself to Yahweh speak saying Yahweh hath utterly separated me from his people neither let the eunuch say behold I am a dry tree verse 4 for thus saith Yahweh unto the eunuchs that keep Shabbat my Sabbath Shabbat right or actually this should be Shamar this is wrong here and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant D didn't Christ say if you love me keep my commandments Echoing what the Most High has said. So we see here, it says, honor the Shabbats, right? That's dealing with the feast days. 
because the seventh day Shabbat is part of the Ten Commandments because the Ten Com the covenant is the Ten Commandments. Okay, even unto them that will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also, the sons of the stranger is dealing with the strangers that sojourn themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, the reputation of Yahweh, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth Shamar execute the Shabbat from polluting Kalal it taketh hold and take hold it, excuse me, take hold of my covenant. So we see the feast day because that's where we see Shabbat, that's feast day, but then we also see. The covenant, because again, the Ten Commandments is the words of the covenant. So, family, the Most High made it clear for the non blood descendants of Israel to honor the Shabbat, honor the covenant, honor the feast days. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted unto mine altar, for mine house shall be called an house of prayer. For all people. So, what is one of the great signs that occurred on the Shabbat? Well, the resurrection of the Hebrew Israelite Messiah, right? Before we go into that, uh, I'll open it up again for you, uh, Sister Carol, and uh, you, um, Marine Scholar, if you guys had have anything to say before we continue here. No, bro, you got it. Keep going. I'm good. Keep going, brother. All right. Okay. Appreciate it. So we see here, right? He entered the city on a donkey. The Passover, which is the day, day he was lynched as well. The marriage go to the sepulcher, an empty sepulcher on the 18th. But again, we have the high holy day, which is the day of unleavened bread. And then we have this, this seventh day weekly Shabbat, right? Which is uh, on the 17th. So guess what? The day of resurrection occurred on the 17th. Because he just after the third hour is where Christ gave up his spirit. So now when you count three days, three full days, 15th, 1, 16th, 2, 17th to his resurrection would have occurred on what day? The Shabbat. But guess what? It would have been uh, just before, just like how we saw the third hour, just after the third hour on the Shabbat. Come on, fam. It's just that simple. Still what? Honoring. These are these are signs. The Shabbat. That's how you can unpack. You know, the scriptures by understanding the Shabbat. This is how when you start dealing with the prophecies, start with understanding the Shabbat. If you uh, call yourself disregarding the Shabbats, you don't understand the signs. See, when Christ was transfigured before his disciples, guess what day it was? It was on the Shabbat because it says after six days. In other words, six days, that's the day of what? Uh, working and doing whatever, whatever um, day to day things. But on, after the sixth day is what? Now that seventh day is the day of rest. Christ revealed himself to his disciples. That is a sign, family. That is the proof. That is the evidence. All right. And let me just bring up one quick slide here. Let me go back to a quick slide. And we taught the other day.
Are you speaking? I was saying, I think we lost we lost the I think we lost Yeah, I think exactly what happened. Yeah, I need to come back on. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah, he's dropped out. Yeah. Hold on for a second, guys. We'll be back. And uh, to it to his uh, for those of you who are uh, some people, it might just be uh, a complex subject. Uh, I I did a simplified video, which cost a lot of. Uh, <laughs> a lot of stare in my old church, but uh, it, it explains these uh, these holidays, these high holidays. So we'll drop that. We'll drop that in the link too. So if anybody want to go back and study it, it's the same thing that Pastor Bill is teaching. Absolutely. I, I implore everyone on here in this chat and those who are, who are not in the chat who are watching and listening, please read. Exodus 12 and Leviticus 12, I'm sorry, 23. That is the foundation of all the feasts, all the Shabbat, how we are to keep them and when we are to keep them. All you're seeing throughout scripture is our people keeping it at different times of different years. It never stops. And what we have to do is we have to, when we approach this, we have to dis, uh, disassociate all the old teaching that we bring with the reading of the scriptures. So that filters through when we read it, because some of the old teaching we've been told, but as you, like you said, so you're right, that those chapters tells that this is what y'all laid out for our people. Come back up yet? All right, family. Okay. I don't know what I got kicked out of the stream. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I'm not sure what happened. I got kicked out of StreamYard. Sister uh, Carol so, kept it going. Okay, great, great. Yeah, it was. It was. You know. Uh, you need, I must be doing something good to get kicked out of school, right? <laughs> I mean, literally, I was talking, I was going to make a point, and then all of a sudden, I got kicked out. Yeah, I figured you were. That's why I, I spoke to myself. Are you talking? Because it was just nothing. It was dead silence. And then all of a sudden, you were gone. Yeah, so what I was going to do, family, um, and I'll bring it up here if I still can. Um I want to go to a point here. All right. I'm not going to recreate the calendar family, but I do want to bring up a point here. Let me see if my slide will show up here. Right. And I'm going to bring up this letter here. And uh, Sister Carol can attest. I've been teaching this for years on top of years since you've known me. Am I right, Sister Carol? <laughs> oh, so this is not a new teaching. It's not. So I want to make sure you guys. <clears throat> You know, want to make sure you guys understand. Channels. What's that against this? I said, and they're all over your channel. Re repeat it, the same discussion we're having tonight. You do it every yeah. single year. And, and remember, I was doing this on Facebook. Yes. Same teaching. So I want to be clear, were, family. Was, this is. And you were getting kicked out, just like tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go figure, right? I was still getting kicked out. Let me see here. Let me see this <laughs> right. slide. All right, I'm trying to get to a particular slide, but it's pop taking time to populate. All right, here we go. I'm gonna bring up this here so you guys can understand this. All right. All right, let's bring up here. Right. So we have the sixth hour, the ninth hour, right? The sixth hour is 12 noon according to our calendar, right? The ninth hour would be three o'clock p.m. according to the Gregorian calendar. All right. So this would be Passover, right? At evening would be the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So Christ, right, uh, he gave up his spirit at the night, just past the ninth hour, 
right? And we confirmed that with scripture going back yesterday. Let me make sure here. Let me pull it up here. Right, right here. Yeah, we, we're right there. So Luke 23, verse 44, for those that didn't see the lesson, I'm not going to reteach the lesson, but I want you guys to understand. Go watch that lesson. But it says here, and it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. All right. But then it goes on. Actually, this is dealing with the darkness. But then when we get here, it says in when Yahweh Shai had cried out with a loud voice and said, Father, into my tight into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the spirit. So the Messiah's death was shortly after the ninth hour. So bringing it back here again. This would have been the period. This is the period that they were rushing to get his body down off the cross uh, because if they had they not had him down prior to if it gone into the evening, then Israel would have been cursing themselves real quick. This is the law that that covers that. Let me go back here. Let me see here. Uh, let's see here. That is Deuteronomy, but I want to make sure I bring it up here uh, so you guys can see. It says here, and if a man commit committed a sin worthy of death and he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt be I mean, thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. It says here for he that is hanged is a curse of Allahim, that thy hand be not defiled, which Yahweh Allahim giveth thee for an inheritance. So in a nutshell, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree, because if they would have left him up there, now they would have had to leave his body up there. If they would have done that and doing so, they would have defiled the land. All right. So I want to make sure you guys understand that key point. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. All right. And this is just going back a little bit, explaining uh, the sequence of Christ uh, on the cross for us, the hours. Right. This is still dealing with the ninth hour from the. Um, and again, it says it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. So from the sixth hour, if we go back here. If we go back to here, so it's telling us. Between this period, it got really dark between the sixth hour and the ninth hour. So between, uh, you know, when we look at our calendar, it'd be between the uh, 12 o'clock and 3 p.m. is when things got uh, dark. It was I thought I had it here in this presentation. I want to make sure I got the right one up because I thought I was going. I thought I had something in here about. The times of the day, but I guess I didn't. I, I may have put it in a different slide. If I think I did, because I wanted to touch on. Yeah, I think I did, but I may be able to just show you guys here, real quick. Let me make sure I'm just looking at what slide so I can pull it up, so we can understand again, family. And, and I encourage you guys go to the. Um, lesson, the previous lesson, and I walk you through the hours, the days. Uh, now, go back to the playlist, not really goes and in, I go into the seasons, Abib, all right? And also, just on another note real quick, because someone posted in the comments about Nassim, right? Uh, when you understand Nassim, of course, Nassim is a um now you're dealing with what what what's the group is it um i believe Not it's the persians or the syrians rather i believe it's the, either the syrians or the babylonians i believe it's no it's the babylonians uh and so when you understand the babylonians as far as nasim that's the name of the babylonians months so you see how israel uh began to use names of months right and we see it written in the scriptures well what is the key Right. Uh, even just that in itself, Israel's new year. Right. And, and it's documented Israel's new year 
began the new moon after the spring equinox, right? And if you want to take it a step further, if this uh, new moon was very close to the spring equinox, they counted 29 days from the spring equinox, right? You know, to calculate their new month, I mean, new year. So I thought I'd show, um, throw a little nugget in there for those that are, uh, that, that, that have posted, um, being that someone posted, not seen, I wanted to I'll give a little, uh, a, an additional nugget there. So when you see, uh, them using not seen, you can't be selective with it because in, when they were in Babylon, right. And like I said, you could, you could research this at your leisure. The first new moon after the spring equinox was their new year. All right. Any comments, um, Sister Carol and um, um, Berean, Berean Scholar. You're flowing now, brother. Keep it going. All right. Sister Carol, you, you want to say anything, Sister Carol? No, you're absolutely correct. Keep going. And I wanted to uh, point to another uh, thing here. This is why I say it's so imperative for us to uh, really pay attention to the scriptures. I want to give you guys an understanding of the light versus the day, right? Let's go here. All right, let's go here. Let me break this down real quick. Um, yeah, let's go here real quick because this is important for you guys to understand. All right. So I want to deal with a couple some some words here, even though this is, this is out of sync here but we'll deal with it first i'm gonna go to genesis chapter one verse four and five and then we'll break down some words here so we see here well actually let's go back let's go back i, I know what i want to do right i'll go up here we'll start with genesis one and five it says this and allah called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, let's break this down real quick so you guys understand. There's a difference between uh, the evening, the morning. Remember, the evening and the morning, these are two transitional parts of the day. The evening, Arab, the morning, Bakar, right? And then we have the day, which is the height of the day, which would be Yawam. And then we have the night. Laila, right? Or la, uh, la, yala, right? I'm saying it in the ancient Hebrew. So that'd be the height of that night portion of the day. And the day would be the height of the light portion of the, the light portion of the day, right? So let's break this down real quick, all right? And I know some of you guys are like, okay, pastor, you got to break it down for me. Glad you guys asked. So let's go ahead and break this down. Let's start with the night, right? Let's go back here. Let's answer the question. Is there a difference between the night and the evening? The night, la, la, or la, la, excuse me, la, yala, and evening, arab. Is there a difference between the two? Yes, and I'm going to show you here. Let's start with night, right? We see here, it says a twist away of the light. An example, night. We see night, midnight season all right so what this is telling us this is where what the light right is begin is starting to what transition out you notice it when at evening especially around six depending on the time of the year especially around six you start noticing it start getting what darker you start seeing a transition of the day so evening is what the transition of going from what the light portion of the day to the dark portion of the day but notice what it says here now we're dealing with it at the height so this right here is saying midnight right so la uh th this right here is giving you the israeli la ye la right i'm saying it again la ye la right that is the israeli pronunciation of it but anyway not getting into all of that but it says here midnight right so israel's uh night portion of the day right the height of that night portion of the day that is what this is 
lie la or la yala. All right. So let's break down the evening. I rob, as I pointed out, this is like the dark, I mean, the transition of the day. It says to grow dusky at sundown, be darkened. So these are two different parts. Evening is what? The transition of the day, like I just pointed out. It's the transition of the day, going from the day portion, the light portion of the day, to the night portion of the day. So I rob is the transitional period, all right? To become evening, grow dark. And then we do the same thing with the morning. Yawam versus Bakar. All right. Let's deal with the day portion. Notice what it says here. Right. The day portion to be hot. A day. And the Israelis pronounce Yam. Ancient Hebrew Yawam. To be hot. A day as the warm hours. And it says figurative. A space of time defined by an associated term. All right. We see age, always, chronicles, uh, continuance, uh, ever, forever, for everlasting. Then we see perpetual. Uh, we see process of time. All right. So uh, this word can be used for a single day, as you see here. Lifetime. Right. Plural. Right. Uh, but also, as we pointed out. Let's go back here. All right. The height of the day. That's what it says here to be hot a day as the warm hours. This would be the height of the day. So the height of the night. Right. Is lie. Yala. I mean, lie. Yala. And then um, the height of the day is Yawam. But the transitional period of both uh, parts of the day, you have Irab and you have Bakar. So this is why you hear people say. By car tawab. Some of you guys will say boker tab, but by by car tawab. That says, in other words, the morning is good. All right, because you're dealing with what the early portion of the morning, the early portion of the light, I mean the, the transitional period of the of the day from the night to the light portion of the day. All right, and this is what we just highlighted here, bokar or bakar. As you see here, dawn, early morning, morrow. So as the break of the day. So when Mary, the Mary showed up at the sepulcher, they, it was, it says, it tells us it was what? Early in the morning that it was still, um, it was, it was still dark outside. It was still, as you see, here, it was at the break of the day, early, early morning. So that is what? Bakar. Was it the height of the day? So when we put that in this perspective, when Israel came out of Egypt, it would have been just past the height of the night, which means they needed the full moon in order to see the light at night. I'm not sure if you guys ever been to a desert. If you guys ever been to a desert, you know this is true. Right? You know that this, this is true. You can't see in front of your hand when you get outside those lights unless it's what? A full moon. Right. Uh, I'll say this to Carl Guest. I feel the need to draw a calendar to do so. That's why I put the image on the screen. Go back and watch the lesson. Draw your calendar. That's why I'm doing this. I'm not drawing it for you. I want to give you guys the formula on how to do it. I literally walk you through how to create the calendar. I even giving you the diagram to draw your own. Do that. That's what I want you guys to do. That's the only way it's going to really set in. When you start writing this stuff out, now you're rehearsing it, right? If I keep saying this to you and you never write it down, now you're not rehearsing it. You're just hearing what I, I am saying. But you have to still apply what I said. Once you write it down, once you create a chart, then it's going to start sinking in. But until you do that, it won't. You have to write this down. I want you guys to write this down. All right. That's how you're going to make sense of this. So now what I pointed out, let's go back to that quap. This is why I say, man, I've been teaching ancient Hebrew for years on top of years. So when when I this is why you had the quap here. Let me bring it up. 
This is the quap. See, many focus on focus on two letters when it comes to this uh, this upcoming eclipse, which is the alap and the tha, the a ah and the tha. And it is really the aleph and the tav or the tov. Nah, in ancient Hebrew, it's called the a ah and the tha, which form the word sign. But the key is this letter right here, the quap. The letter quap is actually a dial. Come on, family. I know most of you guys haven't heard this before. And if you heard it before, I, I can say 99% that whoever you heard it from got it from here. <laughs> right? I thoroughly studied the ancient text. Put a lot of time into this. Did I get it all at once? No. But it took me time studying that ancient Hebrew, cross-referencing and so forth. And this is how I was able to give you more of an accurate definition of these, these letters. So notice what you see here, the quap. It says that numerical value is 100, but it says circle, horizon, balance. So I had to ask my, myself the question, wait a minute, circle, horizon, balance? How does this look like a balance? How does this look like a horizon with it positioned in this way? Because when you go to the pictograph, this is the actual pictograph of this letter. Notice you see the line going all the way across that circle. So this is a sunset and a sunrise. Oh, come on, family. Come on, family. It's just that simple. So this letter here is actually a dial. So when you turn it to the side like this, and if we extend the line right here, then you can actually see what it means. It's all in the letters, family. It's right there in front of you. The evening, the morning, right? Now, let me further prove this to you. This is giving a little recap of yesterday, but I just added a little more for you guys to understand. Look at this. We see a dial. We see a dial. That's the quap. This top portion would be the night because guess what? You will not get any light from it. So that way you can see the movement of it because it's at dark, it's, it's at night. But this is effective at the what? The day portion of the day, the light portion of the day. So we see that what is called the dial of Ahaz. It would have looked something similar to this. Well, why is that important? Because that is scripture, family. Let me fast forward here. When the Most High made the day go back 10 degrees, look at how they measured it with. Let me go to the, the key of how they measured it with. The dial of Ahaz. Baal Wath Akaz. Dial of Ahaz. Let me say that again. Baal Wath Akaz. Come on, family. It's right there, family. You can't. You. It's right there. And family, all I am doing is walking you through. And I hope, man, I wish you guys, I hope and pray you guys did pull out a chart. Say, let me write this down as he go, as he's progressing this thing, because I need to get it. Family, before I before I officially taught this to our assembly, I had to, I had to write this down. I had to make sense of what I'm reading. To, I had to map it out. That's what you see, me actually mapping it out. I was like, whoa, okay. And guess what? It began to sink in. It made it more and more. I began to get become easy. It began to become easier for me to articulate this. So family, write it down. I guarantee you write this down. I guarantee you it will make sense as you write down, write it down and read the scriptures, the associated scriptures. I hope this helps. Any comments from um, you, Sister Carol, and um, Berean Scholar? I was going to say, if you look at it as well, you see the moon. You see the moon divided, the line through it. You see the half of the moon on both sides, and you see the full moon, the whole moon, by the movement of that dial. So all of it is simulating time of day and night. Yeah, and see the only point that I'm the point that I made with the moon, because mm -hmm. in the dial, they don't they use the dial at the in in the day portion, the light portion of the day. Correct. Because the moon, they would not have been able to use that dial at night 
Correct. Because the moon w- was not a, wouldn't have been available unless it's like a it's you showing know, you light. Really get, right. Exactly. So right. that's why they have it half the way that it is. Right. Which you know, so but to your point, but it still is yeah, right. but to your point, you know, it is a measure of time. Correct. Right. And to Sister Carol's point, let me go to a, another area here. Just to Sister and Cap, Sister Carol brought in a, a great point. And family, this is what, and I'm not going to this full details of what I taught here. Uh, let, let's go back to Christ's words because Christ made it clear a distinction of two periods of a day. Let me go back here and then then um, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Sister Carol. I just want to make sure you guys understand this. And I'm not reteaching yesterday's lesson. I'm going to highlight one more thing. And then you guys going to have to watch it on your own. All right. Let me show you here. Um. Uh, let's see here. All right. Let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? All right. I'm looking for this slide here. All right. Here it is. Right. And Yahawashai answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of his, of this world. Right. So he's dealing with what? The day portion of the 24 hour cycle. And he said, are there not what? 12 hours in a day. But he didn't stop there. But if a man walk in the night, now he's dealing with the night portion of the day. Remember what I said here. The, the day portion of the day, he said, what, 12 hours. Now he's dealing with the night portion of the day, that 24 hour second cycle, rather. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth because there is no light in him. So Christ is def- making it clear he know exactly what a full day is. And he's highlighting both the day and night. Hallelujah. Um, go ahead, Sister Carol. I'll turn it back over to you. Then um. Brian Scholar, you could you could jump in as well. I was gonna say absolutely. You 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 hit it right on top of the head, what I was trying to say. Exactly. But that scripture just what you just read. I mind, I mind, I mind. Uh Brian Scholar, any comments? Uh, it, it, I like the way when you flip that dial to the side, because that's when it, it, it hit me too. So yeah, that made it clean. It's right there in front of you. It is right there in front of us. It is right yeah, there in front of us. You're right. You have to write this out because it, it, it not to, I, I know I, I did, I did a video where they wrote it out and wrote the scripture out that I said, you know what? Then I wrote it out. That's it. Oh, I get it now. Yeah. It now. And, and cause see now what you're doing is what you're replaying as you're writing it out. Yeah. You have to check the, from, from Passover to the, to the first, the high holy day to, to the to the weekly Passover. And, and yeah. It, and, and you match with the scripture, it's there, right there in the word. Yeah. And this is why he wants us to keep the Shabbats and keep the feast days so we stay in time with him. So we'll always be marking in time with him, stay in tune with him. By not keeping them, you're out of time with him. So we've been thrown. We've been thrown out of time because of uh, of the lies that we've been told all our lives. Absolutely. I, I, I shared that time. with you, Pastor Pastor K. That that text you read later on about how he was telling his his, his memories. You know that we, you know those holidays and stuff are, are not important. It's just, that they just memorial days that we do here in the United States, but the high holidays are important. So. Yeah, very important. Extremely. Very important. As you see that. When you really understand the high holy days, actually, it gives you an anchor to the times of the year. Yes. You know, uh, to the different events of the year. Like you understand when you really uh, you can use the high holy days to pinpoint when Christ was conceived. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And oh, when yeah. he was born. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, you'll see. Right. When you really start studying the scriptures, you'll see that. He was conceived in the ninth month. Correct. Now we're dealing with the Feast of Dedication. Yep. 
Absolutely. And all you got to do is count. And then when you get, yeah, when you do the count nine months later, now it's taking you into what? The tabernacles. The tabernacles. It's taking you to the Day of Atonement. That's right. It's taking you to the blowing of the trumpets. The fall feast. The harvest. So, family, you know, uh, not trying to go geek mode, but just wanted to Sister Carol's point so that way you guys can understand the importance of the high holy days. And, family, take the same approach. If you was in school, man, guess what? You have your notes. I know I would. I have my notes Mm -hmm. drawing everything out just so that way I could make sure I have the logic down. I mean, we did that night with you. We all had our paper out drawing it along with you. And that's how I got it. From that night, we, we actually did that with you online. And I still have that piece of paper. In fact, I put it in my phone. Yeah. Yep. To your point, I wanted to bring up, go back to where you were talking about um, when the Messiah body was lynched and left on the tree and they had to get it down in a certain period of time so that land won't be cursed. When we were lynched, our people were lynched. They left them on the tree so the land would be cursed. They no longer they they did not deal with that land anymore once they lynched us. And, and think about it. This is why the United States, mm-hmm. uh, France, mm-hmm. you know, uh, UK, all the <laughs> countries that have uh, enslaved our people. Because guess what, family? Lynching wasn't just in the United States. No. That's the part that many miss it. The lynching was didn't just occur in the United States. It's everywhere. We had our people being lynched in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Puerto Rico. Look it up. There's racism against the dark, melanated Negroes everywhere. That's right. So when our ancestors were left on those trees... Or left, not, and it's not just being on the trees, everywhere. But it's leaving us uncovered. Yes, it's not rush. being buried. That's cursing because even those that was uh, uh, laid to rest by way of capital punishment, their bodies are required to be buried and not left out, exposed all night. Correct. Whether it's on a tree or whether it's on the ground. And when you read the book of Tobit, you see Tobit, man, he had a love for his people. He was going out at night burying our dead brothers and sisters' remains. Yes. That, that's in the scriptures. He was going, I mean, it was, I mean, it was that bad. You know, any any additional comments, guys, as we get ready to wrap this up? No, I just thank you for going over this again. And this is your annual yeah. teaching. And it's like you learn something new every time you say you teach this. Uh, I'm just praying that the people who stayed on and listened to this, that they really do a justice to themselves and read what I stated to them earlier, Exodus 12 and Leviticus 23. Learn what the feast days are. Learn when they happen. Get them in your head. Once you, Just like you had Easter and Christmas and all the other stuff we used to do when we were caught up in that other stuff. Like you got that in your brain. Put this in your brain. Exactly. I mean, exactly. it's just so simple. If you love him, you will do this. You, you shouldn't have to be asking all these questions when the your answers is in the book. Not yeah. with us, it's in the book. We, we still have that program. We want the pastor to tell us everything. No, you got to do your own work. Yeah. It's time, it's time, it's time to get off. About, as my grandmother used to say, get off the titlet. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's my grandmother. I knew I know she was going, going there. Yeah, <laughs> I knew she yeah. was going there. <laughs> yeah, but all right, all right, all right, Carol, Sister Carol, don't make me go boomerang on you. Hey, you know what? You know my, you know my nickname. You know my nickname. Don't make me go boomerang on you. <laughs> Get off that breast milk. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Carol, we we've been we've been uh, conditioned to 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 sit back and hear, mm-hmm. but not read. 
yes. to, to tell tell people what we've been told, but not yes. know for ourselves. Exactly. And that's how, that's how they want to be. And you tell them anything, they'll believe it because they're not going to verify it. And that's why I, we sit, so I sit here as a, as a as a I, I call myself a new to the way, uh, but but to understand how when you say things that that are as Pastor said, common sense, it ain't common to everybody. No, it's not. You're you're still right about that, Pastor Tom, because the common stuff is not seen because we've been brainwashed. They done it, they've done a number of them. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. stronghold, a serious stronghold. A serious stronghold. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And, and family, you know, the most high is answering our prayers because I'm, I'm not the only pastor that's teaching the truth, but we've all asked that question. Why are we not seeing pastors teach this? Mm -hmm. But the problem is we start seeing pastors teach it and we have brothers and sisters that tearing them down. You got, you know, there's some pastors that are just really trying their hardest to teach this and our people is not making it easy for them. No, they're not. You know, I had to go through my process. I, 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 I had to iron out some kinks and sister Carol, when we met sister mm -hmm. Carol, I was still what doing uh, yep. uh, first day of the week service. Yes, and was. you was there. You saw it firsthand. I was shutting camps down. Yeah, I was helping. Which you. scripture? <laughs> yeah, you were. You was like your well, yes, own own little Dave out there. You know, little, this this just slingshot hitting people. Yeah, but guess what? I repented because I really, you know, as I began to close up my books mm -hmm. and focus on the main book. Mm -hmm. And when I start reading that main book again, far as you know, uh, Genesis. Uh, the the law when i read the first five books again and i kept thoroughly going back over genesis like wait a minute <laughs> you know what i mean the most high gave us the blueprint yes and then when i went and read the maccabees again <laughs> man yeah. i repent it's like you know what we did away with our church anniversary because we had church last past anniversary all loved together and we yeah. didn't do like how, how these churches do but we still had it and it was like, wait a minute, I repent. It's like, nah, it was, it's not about me. It's about Yah. We thanking Yah for Amen. allowing us to have a place of worship, not thanking the most high and um, big enough man. Right. So we did away with our, our church anniversary, church last pastor anniversary, and we began to focus on the feast days, the feast of dedication. Mm -hmm. Now, we never did Ooh. Easter in our assembly, but guess what? We we taught and really began to honor Passover, but we did what the Holy Communion. Right. We stopped that Holy Communion nonsense. Yes. Why? Because the Holy Communion is not once a month. It's the Passover. Christ said, uh, "You know, in the future." I'm just paraphrasing. He said, "Whenever you guys do this, in other words, honor this day, honor the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember what I've done for you guys moving forward." That's right. So we did away with the uh, the Holy Communion, so to speak, right? All those different things you had, Holy Convocation. Mm -hmm. That's what the that's what the feast days are. Mm -hmm. If yep. you can have Holy Convocation now in Kojic, you travel to Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> in the right. southern, uh, I was in Northern Baptist, the National Baptist rather uh, convention when I was in um, the Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. It rotates. Mm -hmm. But you can still make it to that national convention. Right. Guess what? If you can make it to those natural, natural uh, man-made conventions, you can honor tabernacles. That's right. You can honor the feast days because these feast days are holy conventions or convocations, right. a holy cry out to the Father. Come on, mm -hmm. family. And the tabernacle is your family time. That's, that's your time. That's your Thanksgiving. That's the Thanksgiving time is, is when you, it's a tabernacle. You bring your family together and you, and you commune with the most high in your family and your children. We, we got it all twisted up, mixed up in these other man-made created things. Took it all out of context. So guess what, family? If you could do all these things in the, in the church, you can honor these feast days. Sometimes we make it harder than what it is. Yes. Uh, what are we supposed to eat? It's right there in the scriptures. <laughs> it's right there in Exodus chapter 12. Just read it. That's why I'm not telling you what to eat. I have people sending me text messages. I'm not telling you. Read the scriptures. That's right. It's right there. Because 
family, last point I'm going to say, and we'll wrap up here. Uh, Israel. The Most High gave Israel the promised land. But Israel understood that they have to work. Mm -hmm. The Most High gave them the promised land, but they still had to work. He gave them the keys to the car, but they still had to drive. They still had to learn how to drive. The Most High is not going to just give everything to us without us having to do anything, bring anything to the table. And that's what our uh, oppressors have done to us, made it so that way we're so dependent on them. Mm -hmm. to, to spoon feed us. No, family, we had to participate in this. It was the it was the Israelites that had to still do the show up on the battlefield. Correct. So I'm saying all this to say, family, you know, again, I'm not presenting you this information just for me to still be asked the same questions. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you these sources. Uh uh Berean Scholar will tell you, pastors not giving you their notes. No. What you see every time you see me do these slides. These are what I would write out in a sermon. But instead of writing it out in a sermon, I said, you know what? I'm going to put it in a PowerPoint and let the people see the notes. Mm -hmm. Let them see the sources. You know, I don't need to pump myself up. No, I'm pumping the most high up. I'm pumping his son up. I'm, pump I'm pump pumping, pumping up the Holy Spirit. I'm pump uh, pumping up, you know, the... Uh, Holy, I mean, the, the, what, what the Most High set out, set aside to be, I mean, or set apart for us to be is holy. I don't care about the recognition. I want to just honor the Father. So what you see in these presentations are my actual notes. That you get to what? Now, instead of saying, hey, where's the notes? Where's the references? Where's the sources? It's there. I've got an ask. Can I lay out the sources in the, in the uh, description box? Guess what? No. It's in the lesson. You take the time out and watch the lesson and you write down those sources. See, we want everything to be spoon fed. We got to grow up, family. We got to grow up to where though we're no longer waiting for someone to, to spoon feed us. We want someone to do all the work. No, it's there inside the lesson. Now, sometimes I'll copy some of the links inside the chat, but guess what? You go back and watch the lesson and you write down the notes and then you write down the sources. You write this stuff down and then you vet it. Because because I may misspeak. Are you going to catch it? Mm -hmm. That's why you're supposed to do what? Write down these sources. Say, hey, you know what? Let me go back over and vet these sources that Pastor um, mentioned. So that way I, got, I can make sure that he's properly, he's using the sources properly, that he's not uh, selectively using it to, to try to big up or pump up or push an agenda. That's, a, that's, that's, I just want to just make sure family lay that out this way. I know we went a little longer than what I and to, really wanted to go, but guess what? Hey. Where you what 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 better place you're gonna be at tonight? You know what I mean. But I just want to reiterate that point, family. You know, uh, read the scriptures for yourself, vet these sources for yourself. That's right, Yah, son. Study to show thyself approved unto Yah, not man. A workman need not be ashamed, but what rightly yeah. dividing the word of truth. <laughs> oh man! And it goes on to tell us to what. To stay away from what? Fruitless conversations. See, those that are really not studying, they are the ones that are all up in these fruitless conversations. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. When, when you're studying, you don't have time for fruitless conversation. When you're studying, you're not trying to throw your pearls before the swine. That's why some probably ask the question, why do pa pastors seem like he 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 has um, little tolerance? No, nah, you know why? Because we invested our time and effort to bring bring this information to you. Last thing we're going to do is have someone try to uh, uh, put something inside the chat and they're responding based off of something they saw in the title of the lesson 
or try to reteach or overteach what you're teaching. No, we we kick them out. That's right. Because we're putting the time into this. Berean Scholar, you go to his channel, you'll see the time he's putting into the, his lessons. It takes time, family, and resources. The microphones that you see him using, the the, the editing tool that he uses, guess what? He's, he's paying for that, and he has to learn how to use those tools. My cousin Benaya and others that are laying down this truth, guess what? They're, they're sacrificing a lot of time because they're doing this because not to get paid, but to make sure that what? They do the things that pleases the most high because they see a need for our people. We've been brainwashed to be dependent on one person and not get any any substance, you know, to go to service and hear, hear an inspiration message. But then afterwards, you can't even remember what was said. Hey, what did the pastor teach about? Well, pastor did preach. He sure did preach. It was a good preach. word. It was a good yeah. word. What, what did he and say? the choir was good, too. Oh, you just, what, what did they say? Oh, you just had to be there. But it was good. Shandala. Come on, family. And many <laughs> of those pastors don't even believe what they're teaching. No. Many of those pastors know that they're giving uh, TED Talks to the people. <laughs> or oh, they're preaching just for response. <laughs> it, they, got the, they have their assembly set up as a TED yep. talk. Yep. And they're not very good TED Talks either. Right. So we're not here to just teach, I mean, to teach inspirations. We're here to teach the true revelations of who? The father through his son laid out in the Hello. word by way of the spirit of Yah. Because we've been taught wrong. Oh, here's another thing that we've been taught. Hey, you know what? You read the scripture. It may, you may interpret it one way. Mm -hmm. And when I read the scripture, I interpret it another way. See, mm -hmm. God can talk to us in, in different ways. That's that is a lie. <laughs> There's not multiple and hidden meanings to the scriptures. It's right in your face. Absolutely. When you properly study the scriptures, we all should come to the same conclusion. <laughs> when yep. we're dealing with in the beginning. Allah created the heavens and the earth. It's simple as that. Mm -hmm. That that's not a room for discussion. Nope. When we get to chapter two and say Yah blew the breath of life inside Ooh. Adam and man became a living soul, that's that. There's no need for discussion. Nope. So when we're teaching this here, come on, family. I'm not gonna give you stuff that you should be able to read. If you send me messages about what we need to eat on the on the Passover, <laughs> I can tell that you didn't read. Exodus chapter 12. And for those that saying, hey, did Christ, did Christ eat meat? Yes. That tells me you didn't read John. <laughs> when Christ said, you know, go do what? Prepare the Passover. They had to slaughter what? The Passover the lamb. lamb. That's right. <laughs> Come on, family. It's right there. So I'm saying all of this to say, not trying to make mockery or laugh or poke fun at any of our brothers and sisters, but family, sometimes you have to use laughter to really, yes, you yes, know, you do, you do, you know, you, you have to, you know what I mean? Because of some of the things that we see. All right. And we, so and we I have just to, want I'm to, sorry to sit back and laugh at myself, Pastor. Go, go, go ahead. Um, I, 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 sometimes I have to sit back and laugh at myself of you know, seeing what I was, I was, uh, uh, bound up to. Now I'm gonna use the word bound up. I was bound up to. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm gonna tell you, my wife would tell you, man, you know, I mean, especially early on when this with this transition, I would be up like three and four o'clock in the morning and she'll hear me yell like, oh, and I run in the house. And she coming down the stairs like everything all right. I said, man, I just got it. I the more I just got the revelation. And she looking at me like Okay, and go back to me. You know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. That's why I was being my bank a little while ago. I to... Go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Um, um, Marine Scholar. I said, that's why I had to mute my mic a little bit while ago because I had to yell. <laughs> Come on, family. You know, if you see the stacks of books, I got stacks of books over here. I got stacks of books over here. I don't need to have a a bookshelf behind me to make it seem like I read a lot. Nah. 
No, I got stacks of books. I got stacks of books in my in my garage. I, I'm thinking thinking the most high for the Kindle because now I can hide my books on my Kindle because my wife would tell you almost every other day books were coming in <laughs> because of what? I want to make sure I'm teaching this truth with accuracy. I want to know the arguments that are out there. So that way, what? I can stay away from a lot of the traps. Mm-hmm. So family, again, family, you know, you guys, you're the jury. You still have to make a decision for what you choose to do and what you choose not to do. You know, if you whatever you want to do with the Passover, whatever you want to do with the, the, the feast days and all that stuff. And the, that you still have to make a decision for yourself. For me, when I stand before the father, I want to make sure he the father say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. But but based upon what me sounding the alarm. So that way, guess what? Only thing I'm standing before him for uh, is everything that I have done. Not because I didn't sound the alarm and the people was not warned. So the people will still have to be in uh, be in judgment for what they did not do. But then now I have to be in judgment, too, for not warning them. No, I'm not. I'm not standing before the father. I'm not going to hell for anyone. That's right. I'm, I want to make sure that when it was all when it's all said and done, that when you guys talk about Pastor Kelly, you guys could say Pastor Kelly laid it all out before Yah. But really, ultimately, I want the, the father to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now, you know, I want to give you the, the true rest. Hmm. Oh, anyway, anyway, anyway. So family, right there. I just want to give you guys just just to, to, to encourage you guys. You know, don't just be spectators, be participators. You know, when we give we, when we give in these lessons, write down this stuff. Write it down and go back over it. Man, that's how I used to find out that many of the pastors, man, I man, anyway. Let me leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one like- situation. I, I use oh, this yeah. one situation and I'll stop with that. I know I said this before, right? But I'll just use this one example. This is when I was really uh, studying Judaism, right? Because my mother practices Judaism. She got the whole library, the Mishnah, the Midrash. She got all of that, right? And um, I remember I was studying about the Shekinah. I was like, wait a minute. The Shekinah? Wait a minute. Kabbalah? Wait a minute. That is made up? Wait a minute. That's still tied into the Queen of Heaven worship? Ishtar? Astarte? The worship of Eve? Worship of Mary? All wrapped up into the Shekinah doctrine? And then I'm seeing... T.D. Jace, I see, I'm seeing all Martha Manuzzi, all these guys talking about some Shekinah glory. I'm like, wait a minute. And when I got the full details of understanding what the Shekinah is, supposed to be the feminine presence of the Most High? That's supposed to be the female side of the Most High? Hmm. And here it is. After I had taught it to our ministers, before I presented it to the assembly, a friend of mine was being installed as a bishop, and he asked me if I could record it for him. Mm. And the I'm not going to mention the, the the big this big time bishop had over a thousand ministries up under him. Said to the people, every man has a masculine and feminine said that the man's body is his masculine, his spirit is feminine. Oh, wow. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I know I didn't hear what I just heard. <laughs> and guess what I noticed in the in the um, congregation? I saw all these homosexual preachers. I saw all these, like they say back in the old days, bull daggers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Women. Yep. 
And one of the ministers, I mean ministers, right, that accompanied me, looked over at me and couldn't believe what he heard. <laughs> and I gave him the nod, like, hey, calm, just calm down. He was getting upset. After the service, I went up to that bishop. I said, Bishop, and I repeated what he said. I said, can you give me the understanding, the answer to where you, the source of where you got this information from? Because what you're saying sounds like the, the Kabbalistic teaching of the Shekinah. He tried to sign me. Mm. He said, who's your pastor? And the moment he said that, it was almost like my friend that got installed. He had like Robert, what, what's his name? Um, Lawrence Fishburne on Color Purple. No, Miss Seeley, no. <laughs> when Miss Seeley balled up the fist, <laughs> he heard him say that. He jumped in immediately because he, he knew I was about to go on. And he said to the bishop that installed him, he said, Bishop, this is Pastor Kelly. He knows his stuff. If he asks you a question, that means he's asking you out of the pureness of his heart, but he's asking you for an answer. And you should be able to answer whatever question he asked you. He, and again, he reiterated, he said he is a pastor, a well-known pastor, established pastor. And so that bishop changed his tone. <laughs> then he said to me, if you want to know the answer, he said, I'll be, I'll give you the answer. If you come to Georgia mm. to a conference I have coming up in a few months. And I said to him, you gave the message on the floor in Virginia. And it shouldn't take you no, no more than a minute to explain yourself. Three minutes max. If you can't explain to me what you said here in three minutes, don't waste my time. I'm not coming all the way out there to hear you sell me something that you should be able to do up here. You still hustling. And I walked away from him. I walked away from him. Shut him down and walked away from him. And family, this is what we're dealing with. And the minister that accompanied me, Thank me. He said, Pastor, now I see why you taught us this. And I have it recorded. Mm. I have it recorded. I still have a copy of it. I have the full recording. So, family, I'm saying all that to say, don't take it for granted what uh, many that are teaching this truth are teaching and giving to you, pouring out to you. Because one day you're going to deal with it in whatever space you're in. Anyway, with that being said, uh, I'll start with you, uh, Sister Carol. Any um, final comments you want to give to the people? Just like what I've been saying all night, please get the foundation of these feast days down. You must read Exodus 12 and you must read Leviticus 23. You got to get it down and get it together we cannot continue spoon feeding you this information when you have not done the work you're draining your pastor stop draining him and take on the responsibility for yourself that's my final word absolutely family and to sister carol's point you could read before exodus chapter 12 and see that israel was trying to honor the feast and it wasn't Passover. Correct. Anyway, but I really appreciate it, Sister Carol. Anyone you want to throw into the garbage can before we wrap up? Oh, I see. So much out there to put in the trash can. Oh, baby father Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's throw the baby father Jesus doctrine inside the garbage can. <laughs> I have to give it a three piece as well. Yeah. Let's give it a three piece to the baby father Jesus doctrine. Yeah. 
and give them their order to go. All right, Berean Scholar, any final words you want to share with the people? Thank you for this lesson, brother. Thank you. Uh, yes, we need to continue to uh, stay fast to, to God's word so we can undo this job they did on us. And, and, and those, those organizations that, that teach taught all our, our, our friends, and the friends me you talk about, our fellow pastors and ministers that have studied under these documents that, that, that brainwashed us, and we in turn started teaching the people that. We need to come out and repent and, and ask, ask y'all to open our eyes to see his word and his truth. And it's just that we need to go back and read them again with new eyes, new, new, new look. So, yeah, we can, we can throw all this Western theology in the, in the garbage can. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, with that being said, anyone or anything you want to throw inside the garbage can? All this Western theology. All, this, all the stuff that we, we, we've been brought up since day one. Absolutely. Let's throw the Western theology. Let's throw it in the garbage can family. And guess what? We got to give it the garbage can. I mean, actually give it a three piece as well. And give them their order to go. All right, family, in the words of uh, Yahweh in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, in the words of Yahweh and what he uh, what he had given to Moses uh, to encourage the children of Israel with, because they were so uh, on the fence, ready to go back to Egypt. And the most high had to reassure them because they, they had come to what seemed to be a dead end. And the most high gave these words to encourage Israel but also to uh, comfort and also light a fire under Moses for Moses to continue to press and not panic for the most high, for, for Moses not to allow the people who see or see him panic or be become stressed out. But anyway, he said to uh, the people through Moses, fear ye not stand still See the salvation of Yahweh. These Egyptians that you see here today will not have power over you ever again. The Most High will fight for you. But here's the kicker, family. We must hold our peace. The Hebrew word that's in that text is karash, which means be quiet. Sometimes we talk too much. Like Run DMC said, you talk too much. Why don't you ever shut up? Sometimes we talk our way, can talk our ways right out of a blessing. But anyway, calculated silence. Can't go back. Can't stay here. Keep moving forward. Shalom. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 10. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons. For real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel.